I guess we're officially at six o'clock and uh, call the select board meeting to order. Uh, first, I know we have people here tonight. Do we have any uh, changes to the agenda or any general public comments to be made? Oh, Ron's got a public what? comment to be made. Oh, okay. When add to the agenda for yeah. opioid settlement. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. We'll start right with scoping reports presentations. Are you are you gonna let's see? <clears throat> and we'll ask you, you boys and king to yeah. come on up to the table. Spin I here's I know from spin it up here. Sure. I'm, I'm Rob Moore from the Moyle Planning. This is Alec. Uh, we work together at the Moyle County Planning Commission. And uh, we've been working on this project with the consultant, Daisy King and Ron. And uh, we've been making really good progress. And uh, Andy's here to give us an update on the status, which we're, uh, I think it's safe to say, we're close to the finish line okay. uh, on this. Um, so we're all excited. And the part of the goal was to get the town in a position that we could apply for the next round of grants. To then implement uh, what comes out of uh, Andy's work, and um, we continue to be in ongoing conversations with emergency management in terms of their grant program that has a ten percent match. Uh, they haven't completely closed the door on us yet, and okay. we're making every effort to get into that program. Yep. As with any grant program, we'll see what happens once they get all the applications and they do their scoring and process um even if we don't get awarded a 10 percent local match award from VEM to implement either of these projects uh there are always other grant programs out there whether right. they're from VEM or VTrans or some other agency that sure. will be able to help so LCPC is here to assist on that but continuing to the next stage so with that thank you Andrew for coming all the way out here and I know it's part of it when you say we're almost to the finish line. No, no, you're almost to the finish line. Almost to the finish line. Yeah. 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 The first yeah. 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 project of doing a study, a uh, scoping analysis, right. you might call it, right. of the treatments at two different locations. They are two separate projects, but we often talk about them together. And uh, so Andy will go over the details on that, what sort of options might be feasible or practicable, another word that I like. Uh, in terms of what the town is willing and able to bite off in terms of implementation. So we have time to think about and discuss what you want to do for next steps, but Andy's work will help get you informed uh, information to help make those decisions. Make the decisions, right. We thank you as always. For thank you. So well, Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Andy Hoke. I'm with uh, Du Bois and King. I've been working closely with uh, Ron and Rob on this project. Um, just a, a general overview of our scope of work uh, and the tasks that we've completed to this point. Uh, at each of the crossings, which includes uh, Wickham Island Road and Garfield Road crossings, uh, we've completed a topographic survey, on-site topographic survey of each location, uh, wetlands delineation, identification of uh, invasive species, uh, a detailed uh, hydrologic and hydraulic analysis of each crossing to determine a, an appropriate opening size, uh, developed a preliminary or conceptual level cost estimate for each uh, location, and then just concept level plans at this point, along with uh, uh, a number of alternatives for each of the, the locations too, um, which I, I'll present to you tonight. Uh, so, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with Wickham Island Road. Uh, so the existing crossing at Wickham Island uh, is a 66 foot uh, single lane bridge uh, and uh, drains approximately 54 square miles. 
Uh, as you know, uh, the bridge was inundated during the 2019 Halloween storm, uh, which was very useful. We were able to calibrate our H&H uh, &H model based on photographs that were supplied to us uh, from that storm. Uh, we determined that that was approximately a 50 year uh, a reoccurrence interval uh, storm. So um, we're fairly confident in the results that, that we're getting with our H&H &H analysis. Uh, the low cord elevation on the existing bridge is, um, it's number right. And, uh, 736.5, and that's the, the low low end of the steel girders that, that cut across the bottom of the beam. Yep. Um, and uh, what we found was that uh, the, the current crossing is undersized or too low uh, for the 25 year storm that we have uh, overtopping of that low, well, inundation of the low cord during the 25 year storm. Uh, Actually, four feet above that low cord. So, uh, current crossing is, is undersized. We looked at uh, three different alternatives, uh, one which included uh, increasing the span to around 88 feet and raising the low cord to 739, so raising it about two and a half feet from where it's at right now. Uh, second alternative included uh, box culverts laid side by side, which gave us an equivalent. Uh, span or opening similar to what a bridge would. And we evaluated that alternative because a box culvert allows us a higher low cord with the same road elevation. So basically you need two and a half feet or, or so from the bottom of the steel girders to the, the road elevation versus a box culvert where that, you know, there's, you're reducing that to 18 inches, two feet, something like that. So basically, you're, you're increasing the, the hydraulic opening using box culverts. The, the downside of using a box culvert is, in, in this case, the, the span, the, the bankful width of the river is too large for a single box culvert. You need to stack them side by side. And what you end up with is a, basically a pier in the middle. And that can act as an obstruction to debris, blow, and, and such. And, that exasperates the, the flooding condition if you receive another large storm, like the Halloween storm. Design life on a box versus the bridge is similar? Uh, I would say the bridge is a little bit long. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was the second alternative that we looked at. The third was another box culvert configuration uh, with multiple boxes, four boxes placed side by side, 80 feet wide total opening. And we just wanted to, to take a look at what would be necessary in order to pass a 100-year storm. Now, for both of our crossings, a uh, 25-year storm is the, the standard design storm that we're, we're trying to satisfy. But just out of curiosity and to see you know, what sort of difference are we talking about to achieve uh, an opening that's sufficient for a 100-year. Uh, so alternative two was uh, three, 24 foot uh, culverts set side by side. Alternative three was four 20 foot culverts side by side. So a total opening of 80 feet versus 72 feet. In addition, alternative three, the four boxes side by side, uh, we, we, we had to raise the low cord on the box in the, an additional half foot to pass the full 100 year storm. All three alternatives for Whitcomb Island. Uh, and include um, widening the road to two lanes, two-way traffic from the single lane right now. Um, and uh, with all of the alternatives with raising the low cord, it will also necessitate an adjustment to a segment on Barnes Road. So if we're raising the, the low cord elevation on the bridge, that east side of Barnes Road would need to come up. And we'd have to chase it about 150 feet in either direction. Okay. Yeah. And there would be, we would have to um, <laughs> make an adjustment to the, the residence driveway um, pretty much right across from Barnes Road. Yeah. So we got some plans. I mean, these are concept and we expect uh, with the width. 
when, when you start looking at the width, did it affect the Prevost property as far as the scouring on the downhill stream side? Because no, for all all three alternatives, our total span is uh, at least, if not greater than the bank full width. So that that's really one of the the primary issues at Wickham Island Road right now is that it, it, it's serving as a pinch point. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, the the riprap someone's coming in at, at a trapezoidal shape. Um, you're, you're increasing velocities and you're getting a scour hole on both uh, upstream and downstream sides because of that. Um, with all three of these alternatives, we're we're widening the uh, crossing length. Therefore, it's it, it's compatible with the bank full width. So we imagine that uh, that that scour issue should go away. Yes, sir. Prevost is on Wickham Island Road, which is not part of that 150 foot change. It's the Barnes Road with Keith Ulrich's driveway. Yeah, I understood that. But what I was saying is, so to go wider, yes, yeah, yeah to go wider, the, wider on your bridge section, because right now you don't have 80 feet of opening, right? Right now, right? You got a 66 foot span. Yeah. So in order to increase your span, you're increasing this bank. Correct. That's why I was wondering right now this this above as kind of a layer of protection to the people's property essentially. You know, it's it's to, it's that's all rich property. Oh, this is where so you're yeah. oh, this yeah. side. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Side, yeah. Out yeah. The, the side. So they have the erosion issue on the yeah. previous does on that thing. Southwest on this side. Yes. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Same same idea. If you're gonna expand, I didn't know which way you're expanding your it, it would be in both directions. Yeah. 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 So we want to, um, you know, move those abutments back equidistant on either side and make it compatible with the bank full width. Mm -hmm. The hourglass um, phenomenon is very visible in this yeah. in this drawing, and so the, the the river would prefer the river itself would prefer to be that wide under the bridge, so that the design options include uh, getting as close to that as possible. Right. And, you know, it, it, the final design will include, you know, riprap protection and yeah. scour protection on, on both the upstream and downstream sides and all like the, the The bridge expansion, if you went 80 feet, would that still be single span? Yes. Well, Okay, so in the report, in the draft report, I suggest an integral abutment uh, bridge. So it would just be a, a single span. Yep. Um, I expect that we'll make a revision to our H and H between this this concept and the final, because in talking with our bridge folks, I think the maximum we can get is probably seventy five. So I may have to bring it back a little bit from where we're at right now. The compromise um. um Evaluating is um, right now you have a trapezoidal shape to the stream banks with the riprap. If we can construct those abutments with a, a, a flat wall, then we're basically achieving the same hydraulic open. But in order to, to provide a single span bridge, it's going to be limited to about 75 feet. Um, so, um, just concept level costing, um, so just rough estimates at this point, um, alternative one, which is the, the single span bridge, this would, our numbers include construction cost, engineering design, uh, uh, resident engineer, 20% contingency, um, <laughs> uh, 1.2 million. And we're basing that on, you know, some of our recent projects. We're looking at single span bridges. Yeah. 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 Uh, alternative two with the three side-by-side -side box culverts. And by the way, the size on those were tw 24 foot uh, wide by 15 feet high. Got that at 885,000. 
and the alternative three, which are sort of four boxes side by side, just over a million. So, you know, less than alternative one, but not by a large margin either. What are, what are the not being a road person or an engineer? What are the advantages to doing a single span as opposed to the culverts? I know it leaps into my brain, but what are the ignoring ignoring costs? What's the yeah? Well, really, in, in this situation, the the primary advantage is the bridge gives you a clear span, so there there's no midstream of right. obstruction. Like I said, pulled up debris. Um, you know, the debris w essentially raises your flood elevation because you're right. you're reducing the hydraulic opening on the bridge. Um, that is uh, really the, the main Thank advantage. There are some shorter term advantages. You know, a culvert can be constructed and installed much quicker than a bridge. Um, so, you know, you know, your road closure is shorter. Uh, overall cost is, is lower. Um, but a bridge potentially lasts longer. Lasts longer and is more effective of a crossing. Okay. Andy, I'll add to that the river scientists at the state level prefer the full span as opposed to side-by-side -side culverts for what that's worth. Well, I'm not a road person. I'm not an engineer. I'm too old. I know a single span bridge. <laughs> Why put anything in the middle of the stream to clog it up? But that comes from living on a stream. <laughs> we, we speak to this a little bit in the report. You know, uh, the two box culvert alternatives uh, would be partially buried. Um, so that you would have a natural stream bottom, you know, you place stone yeah. on top yeah. of the box, bottom of the box culvert. Yeah. But um, it, it's still not the preferred alternative when it comes to fish passage and uh, natural conditions. Okay, got any questions? I prefer a single span. I, I I don't prefer. I I do this for a living. Yeah. <laughs> Box flowers are funner to build, but I also recognize that your exposure is higher. And they do have their place, but yeah, <laughs> not their places. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, there. In a single, in a single box option, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So 75 yeah. square mile watershed is, is pretty big for around here. Right. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if, you, if you do get something traveling essentially with high velocity, now you're now the pound at risk of something hitting it and yeah. breaking it. Yeah. Or again. Yeah. Dion doesn't have the same name as the wild branch, but it's pretty wild and rough uh, little river. Uh, for what for, for being small, it's 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 pretty big for a small river. So 54 square miles watershed, and for the 25 year, which is the design storm, we're just under four thousand cubic feet per second CFS. So pretty substantial. Well, with a series of culverts, de depending on your winter and your spring and how it breaks up, gigantic chunks of ice come hurtling down and you throw in a few trees and you can, you can in about two minutes, create a clog that is really impressive. Makes you glad you have flood insurance at your house. <laughs> Yeah, the low cord is critical here, not just because of the hydraulic opening, but giving enough space. Like you said, if you've got large ice blocks or, or logs floating down the river, even if you've got a foot of freeboard between your low cord and the water surface elevation, a big log can change that very quickly. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you want to take a look at the plants here. Is this sure. not an awful lot to see at this point? Mm -hmm. This is all just concept. So we, we put a five sheet set together for each one, cover, note sheet, existing conditions, which shows the single lane. That's the uh, road that goes up to the reservoir. Whoop, and you get the our field road contaminants out of the Okay. <laughs> we can yeah, get the prices we're done with it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can jump over to Wood or to Garfield. <laughs> yeah, we're ready to talk about think, that. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> all 
All right, so uh, Garfield Road, um, we have a, a smaller watershed, but uh, one that's downstream of uh, Green River Res Reservoir. So, so we have some uh, interesting uh, hydraulics that are involved here. So watershed size uh, is uh, just shy of 16 square miles. So about a quarter of what we have at, at Wickham Island. Um, our Q25, the 25 year storm that we're designing to is uh, just over a thousand CFS. So again, about a quarter of the flow that we're seeing at Wickham. Uh, we had a few different alternatives here. Um, tried to mix this one up a, a little bit more. Existing conditions includes a uh, nine foot diameter uh, corrugated multi-plate uh, round culvert, um, 90 feet long. Uh, the outlet of the crossing is elevated uh, quite a distance up above what I would consider to be the channel bottom. Uh, if you've taken a look at it before, there, there's large riprap stone placed at the outlet, cascades down off of that. Um, and that, I, I presume, was done so that the slope of the pipe was a, a manageable slope, but then in turn prohibited, prohibited any sort of fish passage or, or you know, connectivity with the rest of the upstream watershed. So we had looked at uh, four different alternatives for Garfield. The first was a uh, 20 foot, 20 foot uh, wide by 10 foot high box culvert, uh, but utilizing more or less the same inverts that we have for the existing crossing. So again, it, it would still be an elevated, uh, okay. yeah. It, it would be larger and, and large enough to uh, accommodate the bank full width um, and a larger opening, which would be sufficiently sized for the 25 year storm. Uh, but again, no, no connectivity with the upstream reach. Forgot to mention too, that the existing nine foot culvert is undersized for the 25 year storm. Our model suggests that during the 25 year storm that the water level should be about at the, the same elevation as Garfield Road. It's just going to back up uh, to that point, but not over top the road for the 25 year. Uh, second alternative that we looked at included two 10 foot diameter side by side culverts, basically just trying to increase your hydraulic opening, but same sort of configuration that, that you have right now just two side by sides and a little bit larger than what you've got currently. Alternative three uh, is another bridge, a 30 foot span bridge. So much shorter than what we were talking about at, at Whitcomb, but the advantage of um, using a bridge at this crossing is that we can eliminate the hydraulic jump from the downstream channel base through the crossing. So basically we can you know, eliminate that riprap stone splash pad and try to have some connectivity with the upstream there. Uh, and then alternative four, uh, 20 foot wide by 10 foot high arch culvert. Uh, again, maintaining this, the same uh, inverts that we've got with existing. So again, all four of the alternatives that we looked at are size sufficiently for the 25 year storm. We are recommending alternative three, the bridge, um, because of its ability to reconnect the upstream reach. Uh, but then also in, in discussions with Ron and Rob, um, we understand that there's interest in uh, possibly sometime down the line, adding the, the covered bridge element that was there at, at one time. And a bridge would allow us to do that. We've done this, this mm -hmm. on, on other projects where break the bridge, you have connections already, you know, part of, of the design. And when, when the funds or the time is, is correct, um, can add that element on. And the, the design, you know, accounts for the additional loads that would come along with that. 
So did you run a cost now on that one? Yes. So uh, bridges are, you know, expensive. Expensive. And uh alternative three is basically, you know, a similar cost to what we're looking at for Wickham. For where we're at right now, concept level, you know, 1.2 million. Uh the alternative one. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Looks like we could build a bridge of any length for 1.2 million. <laughs> okay. Of course that <laughs> All right. a single span. Oh. <laughs> but uh yeah, for where we're at right, right. now. Okay. It, that that obviously would be refined. Our, our contingency number would go down as we continue through design and have a much better understanding of the, the quantities that are involved and everything else that goes along with the engineering design. Andy, with part of the driving cost, uh, what, what drove the bridge cost up for this location? Um, large, I imagine a big part of large that is the site work. And then a large export. It would be easier yeah. to work. Right. Um, yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. Um, yeah. So quite a bit of uh, material going off site. Uh, the wing walls on the downstream side would be substantial. Because you're looking at you know a 25 to 30 foot uh, drop from the inlet end to the, the outlet end, not so much on the the inlet side, but the outlet side of the bridge would have large wing walls holding back the the rest of that material, uh, and that's that's that why end. you know even though the stand's shorter, you, you know the overall, overall costs are probably pretty similar. So that abutment and wing walls are not only holding up the bridge, but they're holding up Garfield mm -hmm. Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just for comparison, costs uh, alternative one, which was the, the 25 by 15 box culvert, I've got that just under 800,000. The two 10 foot diameter culverts side by side, 450,000. And uh, the 20 foot by 10 foot arch culvert <clears throat> at uh, 590,000. So, again, the bridge is definitely by far the most expensive, but we presented it as the preferred alternative because we felt that it met the goals of, of the town when we should play. And it would be there forever. Yeah. We got one other very important part of uh, Garfield Road. So we reached out to Morrisville uh, Water and Light and uh, tried to get some uh, better information about you know release rates from the reservoir and that sort of thing. Um, so we understand they're going through relicensing right now, and uh, uh, you know the the maximum release rates are still to be established, but we have a, a decent idea of what the, the maximum would be. And we plugged in an additional 500 uh, cubic feet per second on top of the 100-year flow, just to see, okay. again, yep. what would happen. Yep. Um, and the, the bridge alternative is adequately sized to, to handle the 100-year plus the 500 CFS release from the reservoir. Another way to look at this too is um, the design storm, the 25 year design storm is about a thousand CFS. The 100 year design storm is 1500. So basically you could have the 25 year storm event and the coincident 500 CFS release from the reservoir and it'd be the same as a 100 year event. Well, now you obviously have a different situation when you have a dam upstream. Um, again, I don't know what happens if, you know, when, again, when we have these gigantic rains and flooding, if they have to release water to protect the dam. I mean, I don't, I don't know. They're by regulation only allowed to release yeah. that much. They're, yeah. they're limited to the amount per day and it's about a, a foot. So that's just height. And then there's rate. So 500 CFS was about the- So it'd be the rate because you could be, I mean, they could be, it could be fits again, they have the dam filling up. So you need the 
release to protect the dam. So the worst case scenario would be that the, the reservoir is filled, right? And basically it's running as a run of river uh, reservoir right now. If it's filled right up to the top and spilling over the spillway, there's no storage capacity. Right. So if we receive uh, a 25 year storm, you know, you're not, you're not gaining anything. If they're trying to release at the same time that that event's occurring, okay. the, the flows are the same, okay. you know. It was important for us that Andy looked into that, given the unpredictability of the status of the dam and the conversations right. that have right. been going on for several years about that. So we wanted at least some degree of comfort of if there was some dam related event of compounding these volumes and and he did the math on that yeah. and, and came forward with this. My personal preference, I like charge. I'll just leave it at that. I think I think changing the design from something that what it is, I think what like the bridge is a bridge, I think we leave a bridge a bridge. This is a culvert. I think we leave a culvert a culvert in my opinion. Go go a different way. It's yep. adding cost. So that's just my that's my take in my opinion. One of the uh, yes, the arch is still like open passage ways in order to you're not going to get double restriction for the double hallway. So we, we've presented this in draft form, and we still have some more work to do before we get the the final product uh, ready for you guys. Um, one of the things that we said we would do is take a look at uh, fish burst. Uh, speeds and how that relates to flow velocities that we would expect in in the crossing. So here we're, we have a, a really steep incline. So in order to achieve fish passage, it's going to take some careful design, some step pools, and you got to make sure that the velocities are compatible with the, the fish species so they can actually make it up. Um, so that, that's a really important part part of this. You know, I I don't want to recommend bridge if a fish isn't even going to be able to make it up that way. So um, that's part of the, the finishing touches that we're going to be doing on the analysis. Did the arch culvert uh, analysis, uh, was was the capacity similar under under the um, Q100? Yeah, with the Q100 comparison of the flood release on top of a storm event? Well, you can get some like the content, you can get some cool or good matches for like headwall work too, where that might work in with that that grading would work. Yeah, it, it looks fairly similar. Capacity wise and arch um, conforms with standards. It would meet the the twenty five year standard, yeah. and then just to recap, whether it's a bridge or an arch culvert, there would need to be some design for step pools and fish passage, which the state will require, whether it's a yeah. bridge or or an arch. Standards um, part of the FEMA review process is to have bridges. Culverts designed within the town's codes and standards. So in July of 2019, the town changed a 25 year minimum design standard to uh, 50. So your numbers at the 25 are going to go up by 50% or 30% or something like that. So in the final report, FEMA will require amendments to the 2019 minimum code standard. I know it's in there, but we need to review it to make sure it's a requirement. In other words, if we propose a 25, you know, you deny it up front because it doesn't meet 50. Okay. Or take. So we just want to make sure that 50 does apply. So we'll look at the policy after the meeting. Thank you. Dig into it just to make sure. If 25 is an option, it's fine. I don't think it is, but we'll have to check because we, we haven't built the standards that the town adopted. Just prior to Halloween 2018. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be less water coming. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is just a rough depiction, but if you can go to Garfield just to give you a sense of, you know, like what we're kind of picturing on the 
downstream end of the crossing. Hey, go to Wickham or uh, Garfield. Yeah, so this is Cuban is the again. This is Garfield. Oh, Pre previous page, I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Garfield. Yeah. Uh, okay. Original conditions. Yeah. Okay. This might have been the earlier version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to get out of the report. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Um, if you're talking about an outfall and yeah. the stepping that would be required. Right. So in the in the PDF that Rob had sent you, you, know, it's, you can see these extended wing walls yeah. that, that kind of head down the, the slope. So it'd be a, a bit different than what we had in the, in that version. Yeah. So, yeah. Is a single span carriage that in a single lane or what does that mean? It means that you're crossing the river without any obstructions. Built down into the river. Um, so you had a, the an abutment on either yeah. side. There's nothing in the middle. Uh -huh. a, a, a two span bridge would have a pier in the middle. Thank you. Do we got any more questions right now? What where so how, going forward, what what's what's it for us? You guys continue with conceptual and then can keep working things out and eventually right. Well, um, how did it get transferred from conceptual to a project? Well, we're not scoped to take it any further than conceptual. So we're we're performing an alternatives analysis. That's what these reports are. Yeah. We want we're presenting a preferred alternative. And then I think what and please speak up. I, I don't want to step on this, but I think what we need from the, the board is a. An agreement that our you you agree with our preferred alternative, and then that that's what we will present in in our final report that that you'll then in turn use with your FEMA. Yes, yes, exactly. We apply the FEMA loan, right? I, I mean, this well, is, with the, the well, yeah. we're, we're not taking the help. No. <laughs> we're over we're overlapping right right, right. right. so i guess i got, i guess maybe i got ahead of myself <laughs> in my introduction is is yeah the, the next the next steps is ideally tonight you would uh point to um which alternative for each site works best for the town um and it sounded like the whitcomb island was um draw a poll fairly unanimous that would be the bridge option that andy presented yeah. Garfield Road may or may not require a little more conversation on which your preferred alternative is. That will allow Andy to then finish the alternatives analysis and really put all this effort into right. the preferred rather than the hypotheticals. Right. So he can sharpen his pencil and really focus his time on those. His completed report then can be used as the basis of an application for funding that would include uh, final construction ready drawings. As well as the construction itself. So it sounds to me in listening as though what we want is a bridge and an arch. That's my opinion. I I, I would place a lot of faith in your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's not right, it's your fault. I'll take it, I'll, I'll take it as my opinion. <laughs> Maybe one more question for Andy is with the 50 year the q50 right uh, in the town policy which and then i don't I'm not asking you to say something that you're not comfortable saying but are you able to guess uh how much that might affect the calculation if at all in terms of the um, adequacy of the opening of the arch option um <clears throat> yeah I, I don't think that there's going to be a substantial difference from what what we're presenting here mm -hmm. in order to pass yeah. the 50 year and uh, I, it's, it's, it's a, in the bridge yeah it's an increase but it's not a, a substantial increase mm -hmm. so um for example on Wickham a total flow 25 year is 4050 years 4700 
mm -hmm. CFS. 700 different square. Yeah, which is anything to sneeze yeah. at, but, um, you know, we provided, uh, you know, alternatives here that were adequate. So there's probably some wiggle room with those to begin with. So uh, Garfield, 1,070 versus 1,290 CFS between the 0.5 and 50. So I, I don't think there would be substantial changes yeah. from what we're looking at. The large on. option would have yeah. plenty of capacity for that. Yeah. Slightly higher. Yeah, so, I think with the AOP and yeah. the arch versus the bridge, you're not changing anything. You're still going to have to deal with the pools or fish or whatever. That may not be even the fish when you get into it right. with the 30 foot rise, but you have to give it certain you know, evaluation, I guess, for satisfying the biologist and have to look at this thing. So I think all things being equal, the, the bridge versus the arch doesn't sound like it changes anything on these other factors and the addition of a decorative cover top, if you will. Uh, if somebody wants to do that down the road, they can figure it they out. They can figure out how to <laughs> add it to an arch. But, yeah. you know, for our purposes, to right. this, there is a time thing that Bob and Alec and I have been working on the FEMA grant program, uh, windows closing on our right. 90% funding. So, uh, rather get you to say yes on two projects and then we can carry on with the right. other. Right. Uh, I guess you need a motion. I, I, I oh. don't disagree with you, mm -hmm. but I would like to see when the pencil comes down and gets sharpened, what the difference in between the arch and the bridges and the Because yeah. <clears throat> myself, I'm leaving the torch bridge because it's over with and done. Okay. I, well, you know, with an arch, you've got a lot of stuff that can go down through there. Yeah. If that clogs that up, somebody's going to be in the world. Yeah. The bridge don't eliminate all that. You know? I, it, it's good to have opinions. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'd like to know the difference okay. between, from, <laughs> between <laughs> and the bridge. Yep. Rob, does, does the town's commitment to this project that stays on spring track is two and a half percent? I'm guessing ERAP would come in as well as the 90 percent to get to the DI. I assume that's the case with the HMG program. So the, the two supplemental federal and state make up 97 and a half. Right. Right. I don't I don't think that the funding agencies look to anything that the cost is over here. Mm -hmm. It's all the other things that you've been talking about, the risk, the longevity. Right. Okay. So it's not a you know, when you're doing a hundred percent town project out of the highway fund, you're talking about pennies and the dollars sometimes right, because you're gonna have to find all that money. Here we have actually almost all of the money under these two different funding agencies not saying that that's a way to meet reason to spend it all no, but right you right. you do tip so the one of the two right. mm -hmm. it, the cost isn't part of that discussion it's about all the function of right. it with the with the arch how long is it going to be good for it 40 years 50 years how long is the bridge going to be good for it 80 there you go. Okay. I'm just saying. You have to design my phone. <laughs> no, I got a whole design But, you know, I don't want to have somebody, if you're going to do it, you just well do it and go for the 100 years instead of the 50 years. Yeah, you double, you double the cost of an arch, you get the price of the bridge. One family. Yeah. Well, and you're right. And there's no again. It's like with the with Whitcomb when stuff comes sailing down through, it's sailing through. It's, right. If it's going to be clean right now, you got a nine foot open all of it. So anything coming down through there, how long has it been nine foot open in? 150 years. No, it's a bridge. Like the bridge. Bridge. Yeah. bridge. We're going. The bridge uh, abutment's on there. Oh yeah, that's right. The old right. bridge. Right. Was, was that 27? The 27 foot? I, I think. Actually, no. There was a covered bridge in the. 50s when this or 60s when slug was still 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So this is the, this is the, it was funny. I was up uh, Centerville Road at the new town dam, right? And Eric Williams lives nearby. And he said, I remember when the town replaced that culvert near his house, which is part of the Centerville Road. And then I said, well, do you remember the covered, the wooden bridge that was there on Centerville Road at Brook Road? And he's like, no, I don't remember that. But we have pictures from the 30s with the wooden deck there. And both of us said, okay, so what's the natural progression? You got the horse and buggy pass that went through the water. And then they put the wooden deck and then the cars came and wooden decks couldn't hold it. So everybody put these metal pipes in for the brooks, all undersized for the flooding. And now we're in the situation of going back to what the original people did, which were wooden deck bridges over these brooks. It's just like a, it was an interesting cycle of yeah. you know, yeah. full circle because nobody could design a culvert mm -hmm. size big enough, a round culvert, to deal with the current climate. The storms that come down and dump, you know, six inches in two hours. When the school bus used to go across, I hear kids all out and get out of school bus, walk across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one is like we're saying, yeah, we got to speed up the trip to so school. Yeah. I, Terry, I bet Terry Joe could remember that. Yeah. If it were to ever become a covered bridge again, um, it would be able to be designed to, to, to carry fire trucks, let school buses yeah. through, and all the nice thing. It would be a modern covered bridge if a future select. We got one just up the road out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just up the road. Covered bridges have their own issues, certainly. What's the design concept of how deep is the footings are? Because they so when you go with a bridge, yeah. the underscour, obviously you're talking, I think it's a 50 foot height difference by the time you're talking. Yeah. So any underscour? Uh it, at this location, I think we would be right on bedrock. Yeah. I mean, based on what I'm seeing, you know, upstream, downstream, I think the you'd anchor right into bedrock. Hmm. What was the depth of the hill? Yeah, we didn't do any warnings or anything like that. Okay, it's part of this. Yeah, it's visible, but it's it yeah, visible. you can see it poking out. Oh, we know we got one bridge. Mega motion. I just, I, I just not have, not want to beat you. Yeah, no, 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 Rolly. I think, I think it's a good point. I mean, my. What, what was the span of the arch again? Uh, twenty by ten. Twenty. Yeah, and then the the bridge would have been thirty. So yep. I, I'm visualizing a a big tree log coming down the yeah. the river, and and it could get through a a thirty foot span easier than a twenty foot span, but. And it's not that far from the dam dam to there. I mean, for water to run either, you know, it's it can be half a dozen one and a dozen another. Of them. Go ahead. Okay. George, make the motion. Yes. <laughs> I make a motion to put two bridges in one new place. I live there. So I want <laughs> there, there you you go. Okay, we got yeah. we got a second there. A second. Okay. All in favor of of going with two bridges, which we will add are the recommendations of the, of the folks signify by saying aye. 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 We'll have music. Okay. I just had a preference. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Uh, Bridget, it is. And this is he suggested. How about you see if you buy two get one free? Yeah. <laughs> we'll put culverts and box yeah. culverts together to like this right. <laughs> and change that. They 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 really don't like it. And no, they yeah, don't. I think it was an exercise to see well what would it look like, how many it would take, but the regulators would would. Uh, What's the right way to say it? They give us a hard time. Yeah. Now, if you remember a bum, uh, uh, by uh, Alan Ward's place when I put with Doit and I put them two culverts in there. Okay. And they weren't happy, were they? They weren't happy. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's that that yeah, it's uh, 
where the two culverts meet as, as the questions are programmed that becomes a, a, a place that it could fly. And it swirls yeah. exactly that yeah. swirling then creates that was, a problem. That was the biggest thing I caught a lot of on. Um, yeah. But yeah. Go ahead and I put it in. And it's still there. It and right, it can work. It can work. Yes. Yes. And boy, let me tell you, they weren't happy. The fish people don't usually like it, and the river yeah, people like don't usually like it. But, but it is an engineering option. But I was surprised talking about putting them side by side now. That was sort of yeah, that was yeah. Cool. Rob's characterization was correct. I mean, we, we were just trying to come up with some different ideas more than anything, and, and ideas that were sufficient to pass the flow, but that doesn't mean it has to muster with people to stay as regulators. So you're 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 definitely leading towards a bridge too. That's what you would lean in, but you wouldn't say it. But. From a hydraulic standpoint, yeah. And from what I've heard from well, even raising that hose there is not a bad thing. The rain no, is not, not a bad thing. <laughs> so we have one part of town that needs the road rate and the other part of the town road lower. There we go. <laughs> so you match them up there. Um so thank you all. Yes. Yeah, so oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Appreciate great it. discussion. Yeah. Any other? But questions? I know whether the bird we might be able to use. Okay. Is it still <laughs> is it still there? I think it is. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I see. Um, there are folks online. I see Mary Waltz is there. Dale. Did anybody? It's still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Susan. Hi. It's Mary. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, I just wondered if I could ask one question. First of all, thank you very much for including um, in the report the acknowledgement that there's a substantial amount of Japanese knotweed at both of these locations. And in fact, I think uh, it's a minor thing, but at the Whitcomb Island Road, I don't think your map shows it on the south, is it southwest corner where the, um, oh, the auto shop is. I know there's knotweed on that bank in front of that it's just that it erodes away and from time to time it looks like there isn't any because i've seen it both with not weed and without it before and after um erosion but anyway my question is really whether the cost i know you haven't detailed exactly what you do about the knotweed under the you know in both of those sites but is there any money in the budget for um dealing with the knotweed, whether, you know, uh, I think I, I, I mentioned at the last meeting, the idea of maybe pre-treating a couple of years before the project, or I, I don't know, the main issue being the contaminated soils that you would be taking away from the site. I, I, I don't know all the issues. I just wondered if you put any money in the in the cost for it. I didn't enter, hi, Mary. Um, I didn't enter, enter in a uh, separate line item for management of the not we not at this point um uh you know we had a, a pretty good idea of what the the total cost would be and although not weed is important and will be included in the final design i don't think that that's going to impact the the total costs to a, a degree that we could really account for just at the conceptual level right now Okay. So, um, but your points are, are well taken, and it is absolutely uh, part of what we're presenting and, and will continue to include as part of the final design. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'll elaborate briefly. Uh, Mary, hi, this is Rob. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, for now, um, Andy has flagged it and recorded it, documented it as, as it is a concern of the town. Um, so uh, when these projects move forward to final construction ready drawings and construction itself, um, we can uh, more clearly address that issue. Um, at the very least, the um, removal of any soil that's required for excavating the abutments and constructing the, the new structures would be part of the regular um, project budget. Um, so that haul, hauling them away and treating the contaminated soils appropriately would, would be incorporated into the final construction budget, which, which would be covered by the grants. Um, and then that also gives the town and the community 
uh, time to develop a game plan of, of, of any strategies you might want to take, like an advanced action, um, maybe you know up and down the road nearby the sites, and you can you now have time to work on those thoughts and um, see what might be possible to do in advance and outside of the construction area per se. So what's the state doing with it? The not weed. <laughs> Give me, give me a good answer. Well, Mary participated in one of our meetings, and mm -hmm. I mean, she she's bringing a whole lot of knowledge uh, mm -hmm. to the table. And I guess Mary you should speak up. But the long and short of it is, we haven't found a truly effective right method yet. Mm -hmm. trans, uh, on our B-trans project, we have to wrap it all in bury it to a certain depth. Yeah. Know, and at least we're aware of it. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah, thing, yeah. Right. And, yeah. and it was still growing. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're Let's fortunate get to have a community expert in the subject. Yeah. 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 I'm going to start yeah. renting her out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's well, thank you all. And I just wanted to say thank you. I figured all that was exactly what you would say, but I never miss a chance to just keep the issue up there because it's a hard <laughs> to deal with. And we might as well, you know, everybody will want to ignore it. So I'm going to just keep perking up about it. But thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Mary. <laughs> hey, Mary, while you're on the line, I got somebody who might have goats for you. Oh, good. Uh, but I don't think we want to go there at this stage in the meeting. So can can you uh, email me or something? Okay. I'd love to hear about that. Next, we're going to hazard mitigation grants. You still with us, Rob? I'll stick around. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. Hazard mitigation grants. Want to come on up? Uh, let's see. Ron, you want to tee this one up? Yeah, I can do that. So, uh, as I said before, we're overlapping scoping study with the brick building resilient communities fund and as a mitigation. So, those grant programs were modified by uh, FEMA to go from 75% to 90%. And the select board has taken, has taken advantage of the brick grant. So we're getting coming to the end of that one. They ideally would have that whole report finalized and then you apply for the hazard mitigation phase. But the deadline for that last round of potential 90% money is ending in a few days. So <laughs> Rob has been scrambling and I've been trying to get information back and forth to satisfy the minimum requirements to stay in the 90% bucket. And so far, Stephanie at the state of uh, FEMA office has been accommodating, uh, really accommodating in the sense of, all right, I absolutely need this, I may not need that, you know, those kind of things. So things that we can get. And now we're into that phase. So tonight's agenda item is really to focus on making application for that. And Rob can go over some of the, yes. some of the details. Um, so it does feel a little switched. Usually there's time between scoping, right. it sits on the shelf for a year, 10 years, on years, and you pull it down for a grant program. This one we're doing construction right up against the end of the year. Andy is finalizing, based on your feedback tonight, his report. That report will be used as the basis for VEM and FEMA to determine whether the town will get an award for either or both of these sites for construction. And um, certainly, uh, I can't praise the Vermont Emergency Management staff enough for how accommodating and patient and helpful they have been along this whole way. They, they were fully aware of what we were doing here and that the report is being finalized as the application is due. And um, they haven't closed the door yet. So we're going to take this information and fine tune it and send it in as soon as possible, assuming that the board concurs with proceeding on that, knowing that while we're optimistic, we could get 90% local right. funding. There's a chance that there's a lot of other applications from other towns out there and it's not awarded. And then we would just turn around and resubmit it for another grant program in the near future as soon as possible, right. which may or may not be another 90% Right. Funded option. It all depends on VEM, the state's relationship with the feds and what they may or may not be able to do. There's certainly no promises that there will be another 10% match round. Um, but 
there might be. So we'll have to see. So assuming you're um, willing to have us continue to proceed and submit that information as quickly as possible, we do so. All right. Monday. Yeah. Monday. <laughs> that, that, that's right. If you see on, on the, in the packet, Ron's, Ron's given us a, a motion. It's on an item three. So we need a motion to approve. I'll make the motion to approve the submission, the application. Can I read on this? Nah. Okay. <laughs> 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 this right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. HMGP. Yeah. yeah. HM. Yeah. HMGP. Right. That's the that's the important. Need a second. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Ooh. Thanks. Your feet wet. Or hopefully not wet. <laughs> Okay, North Hyde Park Pathways Grant. Just a lot of money about it. Yeah. It, it, well, uh, potentially. Ron, just a quick question. Uh, one of my questions is on, on uh, the warrants that we've already spent 12000 on the scoping for Fairfield. Is that what that one was? Where the two boys in here? That was part of the total. Yeah, they were uh, about 50000 each. Okay. We got reimbursed for 80 of that. Well, also that you're spending, yeah, we get reimbursed. The well, I originally was 7525 for, for scoping work, they won't construction, they get up into the 90s or higher. But for, you know, for your purposes, you can get a 25 percent local match. That's what I thought yeah. almost two years ago now, right? So, you know, VEM was new to this a newer system that they're doing, so it took. I would say it was a year to get the scoping project off the ground due to a whole bunch of administrative stuff. So having that the mad dash at the end is is, is good to, to get it in and get it in. But there was a there was a delay getting going to the um, software issues and application stuff. So anyway, it's like that. you keep track of so like when we make those payments, you keep track of okay, it's paid and then the reimbursement comes back. Do we have to apply for the reimbursement? Yeah, yeah. So right, we have to submit a normal request for reimbursement to the state office, and then they review the invoice, make sure it matches what we said we were going to do. And all that stuff. Then we get reimbursed. From. That's also for you, but you take care of. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Jen, what Jennifer's role is right now is the beginning of every grant. We set up the the counting system in anticipation of. Okay. Perfect. In between, yeah. In between, there's a whole bunch of this stuff going on. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, what, I only get to see the board side of things. So for me, I, I'm wondering when you take that month off is what I'm more looking at. Like, okay, yeah. who would mind somebody or. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of these projects when we get into a break like that, have some flexibility. What's not flexible are deadlines. So as we get a little closer, we'll be watching for the deadlines. Do something early, do something late, reach that. Yeah. yeah. Good idea, though. And you can see why you need a grant manager, in particular when you got so many grants. And if you and if you're going to get money to help your taxpayers and get things done in communities now, you, you really you really got to do it this way. You know, I mean, if, if all this were falling on local taxpayers, you'd be, you know, you wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Rob has firsthand experience with what you just said because if the local community doesn't have staffing, let's say, disappear, or a select board member that wants to pick it up and they did a little bit for the block. They quickly yeah, got they, sick of yeah, it. They, yeah, they got they did it because they, 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 they lost their administrator there. But on the next call is to Rob's office. Right. And the next call, that is the state office, and you're probably not going to get a heck of a lot directly from the state for system. Or you end up with a regional um, you know, sharing of something, not a project, but you're not going to get multi-project management. That's the tricky part. Right. Regional planning does have, and they've agreed to take on a couple of projects, and we're going to talk about them in a second, to help with the grant management task because we have so many. And that's what their service is. But you're not going to take on 15, you don't have enough staff in that. 
I feel like it's a long list of projects you've asked me to look <laughs> after. <laughs> they keep it's just great. Yeah. I'm being silly. It's a okay. great thing. Yeah. So they're, they're always there. There's a there's a little yeah. There's a limit to what they can do. Right. Sure. And try to avoid having stuff with every school that we have is the other challenge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So the bike edit. So uh, two years ago, the town planning commission, which was seconded by the select board, said let's focus on North Pine Park. Oh, we have some issues up there, degraded buildings, we have some vacant buildings, we have a junkyard, we have some stores and all that. Can we, what can we do up there? So out of that outfall, there's a few projects, including a wastewater uh, design for municipal sewer, public sewer, decentralized sewer, and uh, a FEMA bio process, which is going along with this multi-step existing. So that's the corner of 100 C and 100. Uh, they just had their um, northern long year bat inspection yesterday. Before buildings are removed, FEMA requires uh, that inspection to be done. So both properties were visited, both landowners are still on board, even though it gets long. We're talking about a 12 to 18 month process to go through a buyout. We're probably only two months in. They keep on talking to the two landowners to make sure that they're okay and that they don't have any questions and they're going to be patient. Part of the North Bank Park look was a 2016 study from Du Bois King that said uh, you used to have sidewalks on Route 100 when it was called Main Street in North Bank Park. There's a picture saying Main Street sidewalks, and you can see dirt paths on both sides of the little, you know, probably 15 foot wide dirt path where Route 100. And they laid out paths that connect between the post office, the lumber mill, the post office, and the store. Johnson. And one of them was the river shore path, and one of them was the roadside path, like a shared use bike path. So you get all the traffic off of the under just in that but Du Bois King at that time didn't make any sense to compete with trucks by like a wide shoulder. They wanted to move the pedestrians onto the side, uh, west side of the they got so far. They they did maps. We got a nice 2016 report posted on the highway page. There was all these concepts of how to connect the lumber mill with Johnson to bike that. They didn't go far enough to bring it to the next step, which is the what we talked about tonight, to the preferred alternative. They did this, I don't even know what you call it earlier. It's like a master plan of sorts. Yeah, it's more like master planning where you come up where are the things you want to connect and here's how you can get there. But then we never got to scoping. We never got to A, B, and C alternatives and possible. So that's what this grant application is due June 9th to look at those master plan components to figure out how to get a road construction track through scope. <laughs> yes. So it is it is yet another study, but it brings the concepts to more tangible specific details. And that's what we all need to, before we decide how much money the community is wanting to invest in, in building anything in North Bank Park. So um, as Ron said, uh, our office is, is willing and able to assist with both the application as well as assuming it's awarded um, to, to oversee the consultants work on that, similar to how we're working with uh, Andy on, on the bridge projects. So nothing new. This is taking the original master plan and seeing them, the state bike that over and help for those two construction. Multi year. This is the bio program will be done before this even gets close to construction. Because when you're talking about getting something like all of these pieces together, build up all the pieces going to take 10 to 20 years. But there may be pieces that rise as a high priority. Um, if Dennis converts his lumber yard to high density something, we might want to do the ferry street walkway to the post office first, mm -hmm. as an example. If uh, if money comes in that says, uh, I have a big donor and I want to create a river shore path in somebody's name and we want to connect, connect the post office to the bridge, then we can have a river shore path accelerate. You know, so without without getting those things to these other preferred alternatives, you, you don't really have a project yet. A wish list. You don't have a project waiting for the right time to slide in. That's what you hear the plan on the shelf a lot. 
those are real plans that could be built that you don't is not the right time. But they're there. That you've already done the community outreach. You've already had the preliminary scoping done. You might have it right away done. There's going to be nothing that promotes that except for timing and funding. So that's what this this would do. North Lake Park has no real public space right now. Uh, they have private landowners that are agreeable to allowing river access or off-site parking because there's those informal agreements. But there's opportunities for public access that could be developed, and they could be connected to this kind of uh, scoping study. And then what? And I have found that once you start, once the municipality starts to put these things in motion, so to speak, people that you never really thought were interested when they see something real, let's say, which is a master plan, they actually start to participate. I was like, oh yeah, that, I'll give you an easement for that because it makes sense. You know, they they want to be part of a good project. You don't have a good project when you're talking about it. People kind of do their daily routine and they can't get their heads around supporting something because it's too soft and squishy. Mm -hmm. So the scoping does that. It brings it to, okay, are you guys ready? Makes it real. Are you really putting the switch on construction or what? You know, that kind of question versus maybe someday we'll kind of propose hot this to the lumber mill. And, nope. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know. Something else we recently did uh, work work up there with the community on the, uh, what we call the pilot or demonstration project um, for road shoulders and crosswalks, and to see how that went. Um, and 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 people came out and and you know in, in interest in, in wanting to help uh, move that along. Uh, and and in a very you know very simply put, in a, in a nutshell, the uh, outcome of that did seem to show. Um, that uh, the visual cues that were put up over a few days uh, period of time, uh, to some degree, traffic slowed down and became a little bit more respectful, especially when people were actually there. And um, I'm tempted to I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to say like it was clearly a success and the data shows it, but I don't want to actually draw that definitive a conclusion. The data sort of seems to indicate that it was um, it had an effect on drivers' behavior, um, and so uh, advancing this is along those those lines as well, um, and, and taking action up there. What people have been asking about for a number of years. Under so, this particular program, there's a requirement for a twenty percent local match, which would be the sidewalk reserve fund, and a minimum because they've done this enough. Between forty and sixty thousand dollars for they won't approve anything less than forty thousand because they know that when Duke came or anybody gets involved, it's not going to be a ten thousand dollars scoping project. Due to the length of this with the two different main lengths, the west side of Route One Hundred and Ferry Street, um, sixty sixty thousand is recommended to get all that stuff done and bundled up. And maybe it sits on the shelf, maybe it doesn't, but at least it's. That no, next step yeah, closer. Yeah. There may also then be other temporary measures that we could explore with B trans. Um, for example, I don't even think I've shared this with you yet. Is I've had a informal conversation with a, a, a engineering technician at, at B trans and about the existing lane widths and how it went when we put the wider white stripes along the shoulders in North High Park and the crosswalks and and uh, how it seems that that was a successful activity. Um, a concept that had come across my desk was, well, can what would be the mechanism, and could we ask B Trans to permanently change the widths of the travel lane and, and change it from the current twelve with twelve foot between the yellow line and the white line, and, and shrink that down to eleven feet. Which then, in effect, would give one extra foot on the pedestrian side of the white line on both sides of the road. His advice, informally and unofficially, was that there is a channel for the town to formally submit that request that would um, result in 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 the the audience to discuss the topic. Uh, there might be multiple paths, in other words, to submit that request. And if we just call up, say, the local districts and say, hey, can you just change this? The very likely they're going to say no. <laughs> but there might be another channel of communication we could go through to make that request that would get them to sit down and think about it before they respond. 
So we might find additional opportunities like that along the way as in, in parallel or in companion, so to speak, to this these studies that Ryan's brought. Yeah, the 2016 would be the base study, and that included some restructuring or restriping at the 100 C 100. So that that probably will be looked at again. It's kind of a a slingshot kind of feeling when you head in there because <laughs> there was kind of wide open for southbound traffic taking a 100 c and then traffic going to take a left on 100 c northbound is you really have to creep out there pretty far to see the you know, oncoming traffic so i think we'll look at what they call the southern gateway up to the the bridge of course we have that planning grant they kind of the signs that are good so I think the idea is that if you build on these little improvements, they build on each other pretty right, pretty well. It, gets, it feels like something's happening, which and nothing's happened for 50 years. Honestly. That's a great point. It, it makes the ultimate sales pitch to VTrans for when the big ticket item does come up. It, it, it compels them uh, more and more to say yes, uh, the more little things you do along the way. It's, it's sort of like the basic idea of, if you just ask for a crosswalk and there's nothing there, they're going to likely say no. But if you go ahead and build sidewalks and then ask them for a crosswalk to connect them, they're going to have to, oh gosh, yeah, maybe we might have to do this. So it's like you build the momentum over time. Any questions? Nope. I, I, nope. We're, we're making a vote to approve us to spend up to 20% on this, right? That's what we're doing. Uh, well, you can do it two ways. Uh, yes, that's the budget, but you're uh, approving an application, yeah. authorizing the time administrator to submit it by the deadline, and then you'll have a second chance at the award time if you want to okay. accept the award or not when they issue it. So there's no money being spent right now. It's totally just an application. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll make a motion. Yeah, and then we get to see if they like it or not, basically. I'll second. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We'll keep you busy. I feel like the North High Park community is like they're like our forgotten part of the town. Right. I, I, yeah. truly, I truly do believe that it would be great things to get done. That yeah. Yeah. Just sort of, and again, I think it's a lot of these, and there's there's a lot of good energy out there now, too. But, yeah. You know, and a whole bunch of little things that you do. Well, well, slowly but surely improve. And the planning commission has been talking about North High Park a lot as well. So if you ever want to look at those minutes or okay. videos yep. or something. Okay. Okay, next. Um, flood Resilient Communities Fund. Uh, Rob's still here. And Alex is still here. Uh, I think I read this is this. You remember the state presentation that came up to the Green Mountain Tech, and there's like all these agencies from the state are saying we have ARPA money. Okay, right, right, right. This is one of those ARPA. Help us spend it, yeah, right? So okay. We're trying to do we'll it. <laughs> and it's sort of interesting because you talk to various state offices, sometimes we no planning or well, kind of conservation district, and they're all saying that yeah, they're good. You know, it's one of those weird times over the next couple of years when the ARPA money has to be spent or obligated. So this is part of that, just to let you know how that tied in. Okay. So they're pushing on projects. So when you call and say, oh, the select board just accepted the dam up on Centerville Road. Well, we did. We'll be up there next week. To, we had like four or five state officials. <laughs> like say, okay, we might have a project here because it checks a whole bunch of boxes on rehab or we <laughs> removal or whatever. So this is one of those um, applications, again, that goes in for scoping and feasibility. Uh, 45,000 is the ballpark that they recommended to have an engineering dam safety person get engaged and do a site survey, measure things, affect the water quality being called back. Maybe the depth they can try to estimate of the silt that's behind the dam and those kind of things. What's downstream? What's the risk to the town highway culvert that's there? All that business. And they'll mean, come up with the same thing alternatives and okay. Alternatives and recommendations and budgets so that you all can then make a choice of which one, which way do you want to go for the construction part. Whether all these scopes and things are only going to be funded by ARPA, then we'll get the construction, the money drives up. I don't know. But I don't think we can't really deal with that. It becomes a shelf project. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I mean, it, it's going to be a priority based thing. For yeah. Right now, it's more like a money thing. It's a good project. Eventually, when there's no money, it becomes right. what your priority can get one of those. So you take advantage of getting all the work done now, anyway. You know, again, 
because right. periodically federal money does come through and that and they and they then they're not even looking for scoping they're looking for project ready stuff and so if you're a community that has some good project ready stuff you can you can yank it out for the right occasion and say I'm ready. Yep. So what do we vote back here? The same thing. Same right application same again. Same, same thing. Happened. Application up to forty five thousand, and authorizing Ron to sign things. Yeah. So, but no town money spent. Nope. And then we vote on that. These are like percent yeah. grant money. Yep. 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 Maybe given the end of the street every time we reverse both of us. I just like to make it clear. So I'm not like, oh, we're voting forty five thousand dollars. Some people read no, this, think, like, especially when it's on the, I think, at the front court form page. Of you, you voted to spend forty five thousand dollars. No, that's true. Uh, the application semi commits you. Right? In other words, if you're totally against, let's so clarify. If you're totally against spending 20% on the sidewalk reserve, right, then you would vote no, right? right. Because that's generally going to be the next question. If you just know it, if you want to say, let's see if they approve it, let's look for that, right. that's a, that could be a yes. Right. If you're sort of holding back your funding commitment, right? So it's not a total cleaning of commitment because that, that wouldn't be worth my time to do an application if all the voters are still getting your 20%. But three months from now, if our town's upside down, it's all that, you know. That's why we wait. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Man, exactly. Yeah. I'll make a motion for the application for the front of the thing and community fund. Do it see forty five thousand. Well, forty five thousand dollars scope for feasibility study and approval. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I can take this one too. And then I, then I think just not, bring him over for one no, night and just let him go, that. right? Just do it. I can hang out and hear more about trees and whatnot too. No, I'll, I'll, I'll be on my way after this one. Um, there's, this is actually two items in one. Yes. So the way Bon has it presented, and that's great. Um, so uh, VTrans is trying to line up who wants grant money for next fiscal year. So Mark and the highway department would use it next summer, not this summer. That's the second part. That's the and FY24 LOI. So Ron um, will be able to just fill out a quick form letter and send it to the state, which uh, state then puts a placeholder on a, a sum of money for high part for next summer. That's that part. The first part of it is uh, the same program for this summer's work. And for six years now, the state has been paying regional planning commissions to work directly with the towns on this grants and aid program, which is specifically related to Lake Champlain water quality goals and how the road run on. I'm just gonna play with that. Well, for six years, they've been paying the RPCs directly to work with the towns. And then this year, they said, oh, you know what, hold on, we're going to change things up on you. We're going to give the towns more money, and then if the town chooses to hire you to help we'll them with you. the administrative side of things, there's plenty of money in your budget to cover those expenses. Gotcha. Okay. So we have a uh, draft contract for services for $1,500 to do the same work that I've done with Mark for six years. But this time, I'll send my invoice to you It's the town rather than submitting it to the state. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, there's, there's a side benefit in the sense that Rob and LCPC staff have a relationship with the highway crew. And it's but it's more than this project. It's like what rules are coming up that the state might have to deal with, you know, put on the towns. Uh, continue training on the road inventory which we have to do the REI road erosion inventory study, um, which is part of our conditions for the MRGP. So there's a couple of ancillary on project related benefits to continuing this program with LCPC. And, you know, I, th I think when Mark in particular is doing his job, it's helpful for him to understand like the bigger picture. The Rob will just come in and talk about some other issue potentially that only rock can bring because it means it has a year to the ground for transportation. 
So it's, it's you know, you're selling LCPC a little bit because there is a benefit other than just, you know, take pictures, review the standards with Mark to make sure it has done those technical things that the grant uh, requires, close out the grant, update the road, the digital online road inventory, those kind of things, which uh, Mark doesn't do. But LCPC has made to. And which I'm not going to be doing because we're adding other, you know, so it's like a juggling act a little bit. Part of this would definitely be to continue to support Martin, both training him how to do it, if and when he's wanting to take it on, as well as just doing it and making sure we're submitting the, the you know, at least the minimum or, or better for, for those deadlines as they keep on. Right. Yeah, it's not super time consuming or complicated. The state seems to tweak everything every once in a while, and it's just better to have a good relationship, I think, with Mark and LCPC, which is long arm of the state to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And Alex has been very involved in grant aid um, since he's been on board and, and you know, say very helpful to me. So, yeah, I mean, it's either one of you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it all works. Okay. Anybody got any questions? Okay, next motion. You ready to go? I'm looking at him. He's gonna make one tonight. Okay. I'll make the motion <laughs> for the $1,500 to come to the down. <laughs> I'll second it. And then it will just end up costing the town more money by fraud. I'll send you a bill for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yes, I will. There we go. Okay. The good news is the state grant is it is correct. It is uh, more money than they have ever offered the town for these ditching and, and small yeah, papers. Which is great. It yeah, is great. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Major, I'm going. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Second part was the letter of intent for twenty four, and I, I. I this is a process question. <laughs> I've never had a good discussion before. Every year, the state sends a letter. By May 2nd, you have to provide whether you want money in a year and a half next summer. And it's really for budgeting purposes, really. Well, there's, I would think so, sure. Right. So my suggestion was that we get the state to have an opt out because I'm guessing almost all the times they take the money. I would think so, yeah. So let the few towns that don't say opt out, but I don't, I don't know. That I was trying to get rid of the LOI. Anyway. I don't think we can get rid of it. The state would have to get rid right. of it. Right. And all it is is it's probably the easiest thing to do. And I, I was just trying to administratively. If the select board says to the administrator, always apply for the LOI, always submit the LOI when they ask you. We'll tell you when to stop accepting the money. Then we don't have to have this discussion at meetings. It just comes in, I sign it, send it back to the state. So it'd be like a standard, totally like, right. standard thing. So if you principally or philosophically don't object to that, then you could have that as a standing issue. It comes up every year. There's always a deadline. Oh, good. And they're bringing it to your meetings. And there's yeah. almost no discussion about it. So it's like going to the DRB for some permit that should have been exempt. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to predict the future because other board members may object to taking the state money, but it really is a portion. It ends up being about 30 or 40 percent of what Mark can do. Because yeah. he does more or longer sections. So he may be a cricket hill this summer. And it may be partly eligible, partly ineligible. He's going to add up all the costs in that portion of the state money will help. But the road's in good shape for both of you. Yeah. And there's a competency scale there. He's already mobilized, he's already wording materials. And so, in that sense, it might you know, cost less per linear foot, so to speak, if you had just had to go out there separately from the grant project. And so, it's a really brilliant strategy that Mark put based on that. Yeah. So, and if you want to do that as an extra motion, then we can okay. actually do that and have uh, somebody just join the thing, see their name, and then ask. Um, so, so we for 24 yeah. a lot and future ones to authorize the administrator to sign it. That's one there we go. Sense. That's the way to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll make that motion with this future final. 
Thank you. Sorry. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I know we are. Excellent. We are. And unless there's anything else you need us for, he's going to he's, he's going to leave while he can. Right. Good to see you all. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. No, thank you for your time. <laughs> Did everyone read the memo from Jennifer about the grant stuff? That's why I I keep yeah. asking the money about like yeah. money. money. Yeah. And. Yeah. Obviously, I'm concerned with how the money all lands in our fiscal year, so I just want to make sure that we we're at least yep. mentioning that against each other. Yep. Again, why you need a grant manager who has time to be a grant manager? <laughs> okay. Over replacements. I thought we'd have a confirmation from FEMA. Or at least some indication about whether or not we will get the additional funding from the bid results that we need. So the top engineer, Body Click Consulting, and I have been trying to answer FEMA's state office, not FEMA, Washington, about how did the bid results come in almost double. <clears throat> So we had budgeted 400 and FEMA budgeted and approved 430,000 for both sites, but 170 to 200 that number. And the low bid was 740. Next bid was 830. So who was low bid? Erosion. Erosion. Yeah. So the only thing FEMA said was that is significant. <laughs> so what do we do about this? You know, it wasn't on the horizon for FEMA, but it's only it's a two year vote. It wasn't even a very long time, maybe a year and a half between the time that FEMA ran, ran all their numbers right? based on a cost schedule. Cost schedule is like a three or five year history mm -hmm. number. COVID part of that. <laughs> COVID cost is a factor right now, for, right. for sure. Yeah. So I can't, I, I guess it's off for, I want to say it's off for an action item because it, it, the action item really is for me to go and say FEMA's approved the extra money, that's approved right. both projects. And here's the low bidder. Going to DeRoja, yeah. people low bidder. Or no, we can't award both projects. We have to pick one because FEMA's not budging on their award. We do have enough for one of the two culverts. We don't have enough money for both without a FEMA adjustment. Uh, DeRoja, I think has, oh, I can't remember that. I see a 30 or 60 day hold on their quote before they can pull it. And I forgot what the number was. Okay. They won't pull it. Yeah. So. <laughs> If they don't, if we had to do one or the other, which one would we do? Uh, the one with the most traffic is Centerville. That's the main route to the one. Brook Road, if we, if we pull Brook Road culvert out and turn it to two dead end lanes, people would be happy with that too. That's the cheapest option. I, and I said, I said to Mark, do you have any history on why the heck it used to be two dead end roads? The farms at both ends of Brook Road. And he, all he said was at one point, somebody thought it was a good idea to go through the woods and open up the roads, so but plows didn't have to turn around at both farms. They could just go through. Had no, had no transportation network. Gotcha. You could be on Centerville, Center Road. You have all alternate right. routes. Right. And now this bridge project is one. There's four or five culverts that are crossing this road, plus a, plus a bigger crossing at uh, down the road a little bit. Uh, it makes you think about just turning it back the way it used to be and, and let people come in from both ends where the houses are and be done with that. Take out like the middle half. And the three or four people that I've talked to they would not object because they love it when we close it when the Halloween store when it was closed for a while. They were like, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be because it's a cut through from Dunkin' Donuts and Love by Heart. How long is the time? Based on the trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But nobody's stopping to visit. Yeah, you know, so right. it's yeah. the five or six houses out there. So anyway, as a side, it's sort of a side into it. When you see the cost of the road maintenance going up, and Mark and you actually mentioned something about the driveway plowing issue. Um, those are real numbers that are hidden right now in the sense of the network, the maintenance cost, the replacement of structures, and and what does the town do if those costs keep going up like this? You might have to be dialed back on your road network as a as a response because you don't have enough money to maintain seventy two. Yeah. 
Uh, right now, we're going to make a motion to, well, we're, gonna leave we're not making it. We can't. We're no, pushing this to Right. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Have to see what FEMA does. Yeah. The road through can be recognized as the low bidder because they work. We, you know, the engineer agrees with that. The bids were comfortable in the sense of the work to be done. Nobody omitted something to make themselves lower. They were going to do both projects. So there's not an issue of the comparable because the dollars are way enough apart that the work, there's no way that the other bidder could come down and meet the erosion because there's an error. Right? So the erosion could be the tentative low bid awardee, so they know we're watching his best interest. But it's ending with FEMA. Uh, adjustment uh, they come across change so that's so, so could we could do a motion pending the fema adjustment so within three days to get yes. us a call we've got the money you could just you can go ahead and go. say yeah we're, we're well anyway, i think that puts in the roche company get wrong yeah right right, right. right. it was wrong right, right. recognizing the fact that they the bids are closed we're going to start working with the that eases their concern that we're going to go sideways, I guess. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Matt, we're going to have to see if that works. I, I assure you that a week's notification doesn't change anything, but we, I, I'm fine with making that notion. You know, then that way, if he gets something in three days, he can, he can yeah. make a promissory to him. Right. Right. And we get it going. And, and, and if it. I don't think the work is starting until June 1st, anyways, right? The what? The, the work, the work, the in stream. I don't think they were allowed to be in stream until June first, anyways. Just so June one, October fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it would matter, but other than the fact that he potentially may want to bid something to get out that. So. But anyway, we can communicate that to him and say, "Look, we we opened it. You're below. It's we we want to do both projects. We're trying to figure yeah. out what okay. funding people are." And okay. We'll if you, if you just do that, we don't even need it. You know, just say okay. As soon as yeah. we hear from FEMA, because worse comes to worse, it would just be one project. Yeah, I think so. I, I just want to communicate that the board is okay. Right. This is what yeah. we're headed and may take weeks for paperwork to sign. But I mean, sometimes I've seen these projects where they get thrown out afterwards because hey, it's double. We have we don't get notification after 60 days. If we don't get notification, then it goes back up to rebid. So we're only gonna get worse, I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when you're when you're when you're if you bid the wrong time, the few contractors that are left can inflate because they know that there's not a lot of people out there that can mobilize and do a project. So you get super high bids. The earlier you bid, the more competitive. In this case, it's an early bid. Yeah, whole construction season and double the price. So the, the, the normal factors have shifted around. The backbone of this project was expensive. Hmm. Something to think about. I mean, you're, you're, as a select board, the network is expensive yeah. more than it ever has been. You're setting up a road crew to do a 16 foot over, you can't do that. And you're going to pay these kind of prices. When they did Centerville Road, Top of Brook Road, it was six or eight foot culvert in, you could almost get away with the highway crew doing that. The state's going to force that to be a 16 foot when that comes up, and that you can't do that locally. Yeah. So things have changed from a network maintenance side that are yeah. very costly. I'll, I'll communicate that back. Okay. Contrary. Okay. He was for us. He was Preservation for Trust of Vermont yeah. historic yeah. easement. We're not in the most pending. Correct. We went on the helmet in 2005. Brunch, let me go phone call. Yeah. yeah. They would love you. <laughs> Please hang out with us. We see somebody else, and I should I keep I forget that people are up there. Do they can people do they have a way of letting us know if they want to say something? Yeah, if I'm not okay, they can raise their hand or, or just talk. Okay, but I don't I don't know who that phone number is. They just see someone it's an unknown person. Yeah, some some of the uh, protocols for your meetings when somebody calls in with only a phone number, they don't know that we don't know them kind of thing. So you. Oh, right. You just say, hey, somebody called in the last four digits. Can you identify yourself? And they can still say nothing because we're not going to close them out. But sometimes, like, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell you this. So and so, I'm here for agenda item. Or did you catch me? So there's a little bit of communication with that board without the name. Okay. On to prevent <laughs> preservation trust. Can you believe that? We're getting close. 
<laughs> Another 20 year project. <clears throat> Last week, we got the survey that gets incorporated into the historic tenure for about a year. So that's the motion that we get from the town attorney. Yep. All we need is one more little piece going in. I guess I. What is this? We have to. Is this for the emergency exit? Windows. These are the windows. Okay. <laughs> okay. And to have it be finalized, we needed a um, um, an easement. It all had to be researched and done and found out where the lands are and what's happening. And this is over a year ago, but this was before me. Yes, but it's been, <laughs> it has, it's been a long time. Yeah. 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 2021, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. What are we going on here? Just to sign the easement? So we'll make a vote, uh, a motion that Ron can sign the easement for. Well, it's, it's it's in the package. This is the wording from the town attorney. Here, that right. I don't so that some somehow that has to be summarized or read into the minutes. And what does that all mean? <laughs> how, about, well, how, about, so, how about interpreting any, that so that whatever, their portals can any public property that outhouse yeah can't do anything to that. Encumber or sale it, sell it without public approval, and it needs to come support. So it's a two-step process. Any public property, but you need to sell this property. You want to grant an easement to somebody up on Guy Valley Hall. You have to have public notice first, thirty-day notice, so somebody can object, and then you can sell or encumber it with an easement. In this case, we're doing an easement. It still has a thirty-day public notice. Somebody object to putting this. Constraint on the town property. So it's just a motion to sign the easement, but it comes with a 30 day public notice requirement. It has to successfully pass. And the group at Grand Valley all is all on board with all this, right? This is all the same. Spent the money. This is everything they want, right? Yeah, yeah. They spent the money already. Yeah. So we, all right, okay. <laughs> they won't leave some money without the easement. Dale, are you jumping to anything? Yeah, Dale's. I, uh, no, I'm not objecting to anything. I'm thanking you for all of your support. This was a contingency of the Preservation Trust grant. In my world, it's all sort of red tape-ish. You're handling all of it. And we are so very thankful so that we can get the windows done and move on to the next project. You got it. So Thank somebody you. Just, yeah. If somebody will just move and you can just, just, and you can just take that language right out of there. Mm -hmm. Susan or I will work with the town attorney to sign the papers that need to be signed. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Is there a second by that? I'll second it. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Listen to Dale clap. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Okay. The ATV Club. That will be our guest online. Sure. We know down someone someone has called in and all we can see is a phone number, so we don't know who you are. So if you want, if there's something you want to talk about it, or if it just just let us know. We're happy to happy to give you the floor. Four four two six. Tables go with it. Okay, the ATV requesting two cuts into the town highways. Oh. Now these have always been there. Or is this something new? Chad Letourneau is online. He's the requester at this moment. It's gonna, you're muted, though. We can't hear you. If you can say hello, Chad. But I don't. I don't remember this before. That's what I'm saying. 
No, this is new, so I can I can go over what I know. The the Long Hill Road is a class four road between Jones Road and North High Park Road. If you were on the western end of Long Hill Road, there's a driveway to a single family home that goes east from Jones Road. That driveway comes in very close to the Y with Thompson Hill and Jones Road. It's almost like a four way intersection there. Okay. Yeah. Driveway plus. But this, this is going up towards Lawnmower Hill, you said. No, no. The, the, the road connecting Jones Road and North High Park Road is Long yeah. Hill Road. Long Hill Road. It's a yeah. class four road. It's not even built. It comes, like you said, from Thompson Hill Road. It's literally, it looks just like a Oh, it's a really nice big house right there by Brook. I looked at this, but I couldn't make it out. I was just going to the left corner. Here. 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 Little here, that little thing, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. I'm here. Okay, no, so, uh, this is this is Eat Sawmill right here. You're coming up East Sawmill and you're coming up. I'll chat. Yeah. I think yeah. we're going to figure it out here. You're up at the top of that. This is, this is like, <laughs> we're going. I think this is what we're talking about. This is what I'm rejecting the slot board meeting. Right here is that there's a house used to be a trailer here, and then you got Harvey's garage is right down here. His garage. Let me check it out. Mike, uh, Mike Towns. Married to. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. The one that works for Harvey's married. Um, married to Melvin's daughter. Okay, I don't know where he lives from. Yeah, he lives right there. She's going to come back. Yes, oh, that's okay. Yeah. So try it. Try it now. There's another way down here. I'm in favor until I talk to some of these people. It's really to open them up because we're still running into this. Remember, I do know. I, I do know a lot of people around yeah. this, but I think that program. We're gonna do the. We're gonna do the backup plan. Yeah, the speaker phone will be near Susan Bartlett, who's the chair. They're gonna run it anyway. Yeah, they are. They're gonna run it anyway. This is true. But if they run it, they don't have the word yeah. for the select board to open it. And Marshall run into this. And <clears throat> when we did something here before, there was another chairman on, and he got. Yes, I, 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 I didn't realize it was a I just not, I was just not okay. favored to. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. 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 Talk to the people that live on that road. Yeah, yeah. I think what we did before is we, is we asked them to talk to it and talk to the folks. What's that? And get stuff. I think once before we asked the, the ATV folks to talk to the people of, along the road we, to see what they We've got enough going on. We don't ask Chad. Hey there, Chad. Hi, how are you? Okay. We're trying. Good. We'll, uh, let me see. We'll get you. You got him. Okay. We think we have a we have a map here. I guess what are the what are the concerns, the questions? And I I I'm the president of Greek Mountain ATV riders. Um, so we're looking to put a trail to eliminate some some road usage. Um, where our current trail comes out now uh, behind Jones Farm in the wooded section across from the Sugar Road Sugar Woods. Mm -hmm. Um, remember his yellow town sign is on that map. You'll see an X mark. That's where we're looking that we would need to put a culvert. Um, and I just kind of sketched in where the trail would be and where it would come out up on North High Park Road, where this where the circle is. Um, that's where we would need to put a, a gravel rail to get up on the road, like we did on the other side of the road uh, on our current trail. Um, so let's just. Ryan's already gave us permission 
the trail has been tough. Just just looking for a permit, I guess, to put a culvert in because it's just a, the regulated road. It's just the, uh, we have the, the property yeah. that's culvert needed for it. Oh, that's all class four. Um, on that permit request, I think it's a 15 inch culvert minimum. Okay. Uh, we have 15 inch culverts, we have 18 inch culverts. That's not a problem. Um, so they, so they, they, you currently have access to already a, to use the roads. All you're asking for is basically a, it's essentially a driveway access permit. Is that what they're requesting right now? So mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're just looking, well, to, looking to come straight across the road where we're trying to get yeah. onto the road. Um, and you're looking for trying to slow down the traffic or eliminate the traffic, taking the left out of our trail, going up to the main road, the North High Park Road, um, just to kind of avoid some houses. So you talk to the people on the roads? The ones that live there. What's that? Sorry, you're so, Um, have you talked to the people sort of along the road? This road, road yeah. this this is all There's class four, right? Yeah. That trailer on Long Long Hill Road. Yeah. Um, is Brian's daughter. Um, when I brought this up to Brian last year, I wanted to cut across there. I asked him to use that road, and he preferred us not to go up that road, even though it is a town road. Um, he he said that he would find a way to get us through his property to to not use that class four road um, in front of his daughter's house. So that's why he he flagged the trail with us up through his property um, to get us on the other side up on the high park road. Okay, so we're 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 we're, we're they're changing their home to be right? Sounds to me like all they're asking for is to waive the fee for our normal so our driveway permit is a thirty dollar fee. I think he's asking to waive the driveway fee and have a driveway. Yeah, I think, think I mean I think the only reason uh, is we're having we're we're figuring this out ourselves, John. <laughs> I think to get through that dish line and then uh, put a gravel ramp on the other side of her exit side just so it doesn't chew the road side up. Have, right. So have you talked to Mark French about this? That, have you talked to Mark French about this? Yes, I have. I talked to Mark um, and he was the one that told me I would need to get a permit. Um, and he, I asked him what he would like to see. He said a culvert there, obviously, because it's a ditch. Um, and he would like to see a gravel ramp on the like, dark side so we don't chew up the roadside and so we come out more flat. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it seems, if I have this right, you already have, um, you, are, you already have access to the, to the road. I mean, where, where you're, where you're traveling, you're really, I think really the only reason they're here is because he needs the permit. And so what he's asking is for us to waive the fees on the permit. What I'm looking to do is I'm, I'm trying to get more trail and trying to get off the road. To be yeah, honest with you. yeah um, right. They're right. Off, these are off road vehicles. None of us like being on the road. Um, but unfortunately, we have to because sometimes it's easier to get on town roads than it is private property yeah, sure, um, sure. and Brian is allowing us to cut to there so I mean I, I'm not asking to shut that section down by any means I'd still like it to be open um, but I'm just trying to eliminate or you know put the traffic on the on your guys's road to the minimum right right okay, I got it Roland you still have a question I, yeah, I, I want to talk to Mark about this first. I really want to talk to site visit to this first. Yeah. The site visit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's kind of what I like. Okay. Well, that, you know, I know he's talked to Mark, but I'd like to talk to Mark himself. Okay. So, so, um, Chad, just. Just um, we'd like to, and and Roland would like to just talk to him and do a site visit as well. We lots of times doing this select board goes out and checks things out to to uh, 
and let me come back and make it more clear to us that say what um and, and, and we can make a motion that we will give them permission and i'll have mark get a hold of him and and i have everything flagged so it's super easy to oh, see great um, great it's ribboned on both sides of the road on both entrance and exit of the trail um so it's it's super easy to see we're we're coming out right by a telephone pole up on north high park road right on the line right by the class four road gotcha okay so it sounds like it's So it sounds like it's mostly uh, Brian Jones's land. Yeah, it's it's one hundred percent Brian Jones's yeah. land. Okay. Uh, okay. We came well, out to the class four road. We thought about taking the class four road all the way to the main road. Um, but but we weren't sure where the property line was in that house to the right of the class four road on the Hyde Park side, North Hyde Park Road side. Uh, we just figured it'd be easier to stay on Brian's property. We already have his okay, and he was walking it with us, uh, kind of hugging the edge of his field and then coming up on the road. So, we're really only using the class four road for maybe maybe 50 yards. Okay, gotcha. So, so what we need is a motion. I'm I am perfectly comfortable waiving the fees on, on this. Um, and uh, do you do you want to wait for a final approval or one more talk with Mark? Or I, I would just like to talk to Mark before we make a. What? Why don't Why don't we have a motion that we waive the fees and that they can go ahead once uh, Roley has just had a conversation with Mark, probably gone out, made made pending Mark final can, approval. Yeah, pending Mark's final approval. So moved. Yeah. So that that ought to take care of it. If they since everything's well marked, but if they need to. Rolly can get in touch with you, or he and Mark will go look at it, or whatever. How's that sound, Chad? Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Great. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, guys. May everything dry up for you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Chad. We'll Thank you. Some. Yeah. There's access. Access. I can smell this. Yeah, we got more to I know it. I know. It. Yeah. Okay. No, Lawn mowing. I'm not so right. I'm not so right. No. What's that? I'm not so right. Um, a lot of their lawn mowing out there for sale. Okay, like guys. Lawn mowing. What's Oh, Matt, I can speak to a little bit of this. Uh, the ball fields, I've gotten one vote, got a second conversation today. Um, Brock, I reached out to him. He, he didn't like the idea that we asked for or bids. He, I could read the text message, but it's not pleasant. He basically said, if you guys don't like my past member and what I've been doing and find something else. But I feel like it's town money and town representative. And you're right. And it it the rec community for the last 10 years just has text messaged him and said, do you want to do it again? And I just felt like it wasn't fair to any of the local businesses. So we've got one number. It's very representative of what we've had in the past at the rec fields. I think Isaac Spall we we didn't get any numbers we put it out the bid for all of it, the big group, like we talked when we yeah. met with the cemetery. We got nobody that quoted it back. So then I, I, Isaac has called back, and I think Isaac's going to sign a three year contract with the cemeteries. Yeah, yeah. I talked with him today. He was in the office. He went through the to Spalding, who's been doing it currently. Yeah, I've been working with the cemetery commission, Judy Lamp there, and Isaac to get things worked out. Uh, that is for. Four categories: cemeteries, there's six of them, town office, the library, and the rail trail. Those are our four main areas that we've been doing within the ball. Yeah. So I don't think anybody's come on everything. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, I'm not sure if he wants ball field or not. He said he he would do that if nobody else committed to it. Okay. So he may have a um, yeah. He he threw a number out there and he said it, basically he didn't carry the way. Um, 
but he's basically said that he either want to commit or not. So, um, so I've got a draft contract for Isaac uh, or small property maintenance for the four that I just described, minus the ball fields. Yeah. And that is a thousand dollar increase on the cemetery. It was nine thousand last year. It was ten thousand this year. That was approved by the commissioners. I told Isaac that we had about a thousand dollars a year for the three properties when DOC was doing it, and he suggested two thousand for commercial rates. I guess seems perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of you know it's it's a good price. So it'll be twelve thousand dollars three year contract, and if any party had a disagreement, there's a thirty day out clause. If anybody goes sideways for some reason, and then there's also a provision that says if the world changes, we can uh, negotiate the next year's post. What are you going to do about the ball fields? Uh, Elwood Mowing gave us a number. I was going to call Brock and say, you got one more chance to give me a number. Follows it. Yeah. So if you do have some recommendation, I'll need to work with them on the contract. I'm pretty sure it'll be Elwood at this point. I, I think Brock's um, the only thing Elwood's cold gave us like a spring cleanup and a fall cleanup. And I don't think that I just got to talk with him about. Yeah, there's, there's one paragraph I need to insert into a contract. So yeah, exactly what you're going to have to do. Yeah. Well, that's the fair way to everybody is spread right. an alphabet. Right. You know, and that's even he's even the only person who gave a number. So that's in my mind, I feel like that's the number we go with. He's the only person we put it out the bit. Right. We we almost reopened it. Oh yeah. So I think it's no. Well, I mean, I don't want to say, like I understand Brock's standpoint as far as he's done it for so long and you don't like the number vote, but at the same time, he doesn't understand how local it's Taxpayer money, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to. Would you think a one year contract up there to see how it goes? Yeah, years? I think so. This he just started his business. This kid's literally just he is fresh out the gates. So, um, I do know that he's very involved and in he knows the facility very well. So, I do know okay. that he'll take a lot care. of it. He is, yeah, it's going to take a very probably okay. was new, uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. and they took a one year contract with cemetery, then the cemetery liked them enough to do a two year contract, which ended last summer. And now, uh, doing three years, years. Okay. it eased the cemetery commissions. Uh, they're all concerned about it's a big contract, all the details. Yep. So, we took that back in house and we're, we're working directly with Spalding now. And cemetery commissions have to work, we'll take that on. So, but that's the art the motion today is. At least uh, Spalding is ready to go. Let's go. Spalding, three year contract is Spalding 12,000 a year. And Elwood's a one year contract. I think his was like 7,000. Just take on the, the mode. It is made mode the same. Depending on the hybrid, we have the contract ready to go. I'll use it. I'll allow the motion or second. Perfect. Set 12 and 7. Yes. One year on the 7, right. three years on the 12. Fine. Right. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposing? Abstaining? Okay. Hazardous tree removal. Well, this is one tree that's going to be cut down here. It says tree. Not trees. That, that's right. We got to close. Yeah. To all 30. <laughs> all 30. You want to start cutting trees now? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, request for proposals that was sent out, managed by the uh, town tree warden. Thirty trees. Yep, thirty trees. It's a town tree warden. Dave Palumbo uh, did pretty much the whole thing. He he taped the trees, inspected the trees, you know, the industry hill, Centerville Road area, identified thirty trees that are at risk, hazard trees from highway. So they said we have a problem with this tree. We need to go on. And then a few ash trees that are uh, large, which create the biggest risk to the travelers. Those large ash trees, some of the smaller ash trees end up all over if they get infected with the uh, EAB bug. But uh, tree. So we got three bids, and then Michael's tree service was lowest uh, 30. So do not exceed uh, 5,000, 5, which yeah. is in the highway budget. They, Specifically, mark thirty trees, and I think uh, 
Michael's was a couple hundred dollars less. So the others were over five thousand to do other business. Yeah. So he, he was he one within right. budget, and he'll do a good job. We do have to conclude his employee status, which ends April thirtieth. Right. And then he can start his contracting service and try to get the work done before June thirtieth. That's the. So is he going to do this on weekends? Is that or what's this one? I don't know. He's going to, well, he's going to terminate our employment, so he's going to be a regular contractor. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They said it start after May first. Yeah, we don't think it was. I make a motion to approve it. Oh, now is he? He's in our town highway. He's going to use his signs and everything. He, he's out. He's going to be out of highway. Out of the thirtieth. In May, he's going to do a contract in order to do. But he's office. still; these are still beside the road. Yeah, I think I think the way Dave Palumbo dealt with it is working with Mark on the logs. Everything else goes. Mark French would deal with the logs. Some old owners want the logs. Some owners don't. So he'll put his signs out, telling everybody he's required by the contractor to follow all the safety sign rules. Okay, that's what that's what's in the contract. Okay. And the only the only involvement we have on the logs that somebody wants to push it up onto their front lawn that Mark said he could do with his back over. You know, so that's one of the main pieces. So our highway guys are going to be involved in this. They will be in the sense of the logs. I think Dave, Dave and Mark worked out something for the logs. The okay. landowner agreement. So and the landowners might have a request to bring it up onto the property a little bit more. And, and but we want the guy cutting the trees. So we don't do a, the highway guys aren't going to do the traffic in the brush cleaning and all that. No, but it's one backhoe going up to move those logs. It's all just to move the logs. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just it just seems like the right the crap and the hook and the over or whatever you call that the grabber. Right. Thumb. Thumb. All right. No, I don't. Know. They got a thumb on that one. But they got the bucket. They get the grab on our knee or grab and AUV. Okay. So this will be an authorization to have uh, Dave Palumbo sign a contract. Mike. Okay, we need a motion for that. I made a motion. For okay. Palumbo okay. sign the contract. Yeah. Okay. Did you did you say that? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Liquor license. New process this year for our state of Vermont. So yeah. Went to an online portal. Up until last year, we had the old school fill out a long application. Everybody has to sign the seat. That's what I was going to say. I didn't sign up. I remember so, this last year. These are the new forms, which are like print screen version. There's no place that you can just like what to sign anymore. But you do have to have a motion to approve the liquor licenses from the three people that are on the agenda. Go for it. The JNC Bread Company's tent is, is really two cents a day, right? Yes. I'll make the motion. I'll say it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let's see. Take a little break. Warrants and financial and the finance memo. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Okay. On um, the library one, there's like like who pays some like who pays these bills? Like who's the official writes the check? Is it Jen? Rob, right. I'm pretty sure they have a treasurer. Because <laughs> I yeah. So like like well they have a, they have approved, they have an approved um, they have their own bank account. So okay. Right. And so they approve it and then the checks go up from them. Okay. I just wondered because there's like a, a late fee on one of the things. And I was just wondering, is this? Sorry, I was the library. Oh. The library had a, a bill and there's a late fee. Yeah. And I was just wondering why. I mean, we're worried about money, but then you have late fees. So yeah, so the late fees, if it was a credit card, yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Um, you had issues with them, they have a very quick turnaround. With credit cards, 21 days or something, and by the time it goes to the trustees and gets back, there's been some gaps. So, Jen has been working with the uh, trustees to tighten up their yeah. transit, and it was going good for Ohio. There was some problems a year ago where it was almost every bill had a late fee on it. 
for the reason. So I don't know exactly what happened with this one, but the trustees are the ones that approve the warrant, which is slightly like what you guys do with your warrant. When you see it yeah. here, it's like informational and the trustees have already approved it. So whether they are aware of it, I can ask them to see what happened like an internal process of the government. So make I'm sure if it happens every time or if it's a one. Yeah, exactly. one it's my question. It was an issue, I think it was resolved. And then this is new, why they have it. Yeah, she was working with Jim Noyes yeah. to get that sorted out. Yeah. So. And, and Amy Olson. Right. Her, so. Yeah. and we'll follow up on that. Yeah. Need a motion to approve the warrants and yeah, I know some of you. So <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. When I when I was messing around with the ATV guy trying to figure out why he wasn't coming in or being able to talk, and then through adjusted some of the settings, I so definitely turned off the unmute option. So Harry was trying to come on and oh. could unmute herself. So she sent me a chat that just said, you denied me. I was just going to interrupt everybody and say, I haven't the stamina. Thanks for the select for your tireless work. <laughs> Stop signing off now. <laughs> Have the motion made by Roland, second by who? I decided. Oh, all kinds of seconds, right? Sure. Hey, not been. She's getting her feet wet tonight. She's spending all the money. Yeah. She's getting $3 million. Oh, two bridges. Okay. <laughs> We're into it. You notice how I didn't argue? There were so many things I almost said. Um, let me see. I want to uh, prove the minutes. See April 11th. I didn't. I didn't see him. Wait, April it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, not. Um, sometimes I only get so far through stuff. Yeah. No, I don't want to know. I was just looking at the I'll find it. I've already read the one at home. Yeah. You ever see them? Yeah. Go on. I don't think men do that. Yeah. 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 Figure it out. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> on the dots. Uh, they're already ready. We can always do those later. I can do a screen share on there. I can put them off. No, I'm okay. Okay. I'm fine. Motion and second. Yeah. All in favor of approving the minute signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining, closing, anything? Okay. Ooh. Old and new business. Ah, oh. I, I, I bet you that's why Dale's still here. I was going, why did okay? Yeah, I guess I had two item points: the opioid and second round of settlements, and the guy in Valley Hall River Bank Stabilization Project. Right, it's really not a project, but when we were doing the yeah, I should say. When we were doing the survey work for the easement, Matt Reed was buying the building, looking for pins and corners and taking shots on the back foundation wall and all that. And he had trouble uh, walking on the bank of the back of the building. Um, and if you look at the survey, the river bank starts at the river water, goes straight up and in, into the foundation wall. So there's no uh, separation between the edge of the foundation and where the river bank top is. So any any rise in the river goes right up onto the foundation, basically, is what that means. But he also noticed that the material back there was not stable. It was soft. It was uh, squidgy. It was mixed in with other materials, rocks and bricks. 
totally not stabilized. So I, I call up Al Spitzer. I said, Al, he's like the property manager. And I said, Al, what, what's going on with that? I knew it was iffy back there. That They had a kind of a straight pipe to the river for the bathrooms. Still there into the river. So that might be one reason why it's unstable. But he thought 25 years ago. We know it, but it is 2011 and 2019. 24, 25. So, recommendations have an assessment done with a foundation person just to make sure that that foundation is not at risk. So, I don't know what else to do about this advance in my year. What do you do? What? What would you do? I know what I'd do. Yeah. He heard those projects earlier. Okay. You can start with a design and it mm -hmm. costs a lot of money. Yeah. You end up rip wrapping the bejesus out of it. <clears throat> you find a pipe, you start by putting it. I need the septic and then you over it on. So this is this is the one approach. Night night consultant specialized in structural engineering. Recommended by Doug Weber, who's the sort of the town engineer on long year projects. Okay. We don't have an official town engineer who kind of pick and choose based on project need. But Doug didn't want to touch it because he's more of a roadway. You're going to be a learned engineer. No, but to design it to figure out what you need. Well, it's an assess the assessment fund. The Flood Resilient Communities Fund, 100% money from the state ARPA, is probably the likely funding source for a significant stabilization project. Until that money goes away, then it's back to the town. I hate when we get back here. You have to buy these men. No, no, no. You spent money on a survey with Matt Reed. Yeah. He went back to 18 something, 18, 15, 16, 1870. Found that the old hotel granted an easement to the guy uh, to the Valley Hall Company. People always call guy it was Valley Hall Company, which was a lumber company. That built the building originally for community use. It's almost like a community for that's all, I guess, for that part. They, being the old hotel property, granted a maintenance easement all along the north side of the hall to service what we think was side entrances. So even though the property line goes to the drip edge on that north side up against the old hotel or yellow hotel, there's an easement that allows. Access from moving hundred onto the hotel property and into their backyard for maintenance of the whole site, which is exactly where we started the, the question of the fire escape and the, right. the need to figure that out. So access is not an issue. It is more about the cost and whether you want to try to hit the ARPA, say ARPA money to the paper. But I mean, it's, I would need an assessment first. The problem with the assessment is it, it what that said, it, it starts the process of needing resolved once you have real information. Right now we have that inspection of happenstance inspection, inspection by the surveyor that said there's an issue back there. When I called out Spitzer, he said 25 years ago it flooded. I think it upset some things that were back there. And the committee did realize that there's a crack on the back foundation somewhere. I, I don't really, I haven't seen it myself, so I don't know if that's a Foundation, you know, vertical crack or if it's a horizontal crack, and the foundation from whatever, yeah, it's a oh, it's it's over about 150 years old, anyway. So I don't have well, I mean, in 25 years, you know, again, go back to the first bridge conversation, 
and all the wash that you're getting with the water that comes down through. I mean, how, how much further out was that 25 years ago as opposed to you're literally right on your back wall? I don't know how far I'm out of the back, how far out of the back wall. I'm going to show you this right here. One second, I'll share the screen right there. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> but it could be a great project for all that the, the state ARPA money. I mean, that's the kind of thing that they could definitely come in and fix that I don't see us being able to fix. We manage it. <laughs> Dale <coughs> really? and folks were down here one time we were talking about jacking it up and moving it. Yeah, I moved that. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's the here's the that, road. That may become a better and better idea. Um you see Route 100, the old hotel yeah. right here. This is the easement area that was granted to the hall. This is the front walkway for the septic tank to the hall. Okay, yep. And then you have your porch, and there's two 20 foot wide strips of land that were granted to the guy at the valley. And, and the dry well is the bleach fields where? The dry well's where? Right there. Okay. The water line is over here. The septic is on the other side of that walkway. And then you go down. It's a long building, so it's, yeah. fire escape. And then the top of bank is this dark line. Okay. Sort of bumps into this foundation wall. Wow. That was that was Matt Reed when he was back there. He said, "I gotta show you guys this because." Typically, you have some stability on the outside foundation wall, sometimes five or ten feet, and that's right. not zero. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know how deep. How, I haven't looked at the foundation wall to see if it's deep. I think it's six or seven feet below grade, at least, because I was down there once and I wasn't like hitting the ceiling, but it's a mix of poured concrete and stone. I think that back wall is poured concrete. Um, and that was the area of concern. It's the, these these rectangles here are like the old bathrooms for the old Grange Hall that are kind of degraded. It, it looks like to me them are hanging out in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just their subsurface for the sewer. <laughs> I just decided I wasn't going there, Rolly. It's like, oh, okay. Can can you guys hear me? Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. So I see the map and those two concrete things that you see in the back, they are the support structure for what was the two outhouses. And they are actually a solid block of concrete. What you're not seeing is that that hash marked line that looks like everything is dangling in mid air. It does slope. It does slope down to the river. And there's a couple of full sized maple trees um, like near that straight line that goes from the concrete to the river, it does slope down and it's a very long ways. So the river would have to come insanely high to erode the back of the foundation for the hall. But it is also true that if you step off the deck stairs and walk around the back of the building, when you hit the back corner, there's no wide pathway to walk. What's your take on this, Dale? I think um, what we talked about once before, Dale. Right. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's no question that someone will look at the back of that building and say, this needs attention. And there's somebody else standing on the other side saying, well, it's been standing there since 1910. Um, so it's, it's not perfect, but it is standing there solidly. Um, but I think the I, I'm not sure how this ended up on your agenda tonight, but we certainly would say, you know, thank you in advance for any studies that you would like to do about it. But it isn't perilously dangling over the water, despite the fact that the uh, 
I can't remember what words you just used. We're at the top of the bank. That's not very wide, but it does not drop straight to the water. It just slopes very steeply to the water. And those concrete pads that used to be the old outhouse, that's sitting on solid ground, just not very much of it. Yeah, so I see this point that I'm pointing at right now. Yes. That's at elevation 860. And it drops 10 feet, and it drops 10 feet to 840, which is pretty close to the edge of water. So there is a there is a good you know, length there. Okay. Yeah. The problem is that the instability of this area may have been caused by three flood events in the last 25 years. So you know, going back to 2000 or 1910 doesn't doesn't mean that this was all the way out here at one point. No, I totally hear you. But if you do look over the embankment, if you look out the uh, stage windows down over the back, one yeah. of those gigantic maple trees has a maple bucket in it. So people were scrambling on that embankment, tapping that tree at some point. Yeah, it's like a bollard, I guess, or something you'd find a parking lot to keep the buildings in place. Yeah, really, do not cut down that tree, <laughs> no matter what. Right, right, that would exasperate the risk. For so, sure, for sure. Would require us to cut trees. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what to do at that point. But it's, yeah. stuck, it's stuck between you know looking at it or not looking at it. If you look at it, you're going to start potentially on a track that gets you expense, high expense. If you monitor it, I, then you have to feel comfortable with monitoring it and knowing that you know the next flood event we should look at it and see what changed or you know some down the flood here. Yeah, one of the one of the things that we had talked about was you know every six months or so taking a measurement against the beams and the wall in the basement to see if anything had moved. Yeah, I suppose we could skip from a from a bank stabilization to just a foundation study to see if the foundation is stable. Right. That would be and if you're going to go that far and we're looking at free aqua money, you might as well go the other way. Let's stabilize the bank here. If we're looking at a possibility of free money, I'm I'm all in for it. But if you're just asking me to tell the town of taxpayers exactly. to pay big money to do it, then I so can can we I check to see if this is one of these? Can <clears throat> what I'd like to know is can you can you ask that you know with this with these projects they're looking for? Um, can you get an idea of the feasibility uh, if they'd be interested? Before we officially ask for it, can you spell that for me? Just, just for that. yeah, I think there, yeah, there's two. How far do you want to go? Oh, I'll keep going further. further. Okay, yeah. Move it, move it to the middle. Get somebody to donate some land or something. There's a bunch of land out there, and move it right out of that place. Uh, <laughs> Dale and I talked about that once before. Okay. Yeah, move, yeah, right, moving the whole building. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that that'd be, you know, that'd be an interesting question to ask too, huh? In in terms of that, you know, here we have it could take X amount of money to really deal with this, or can we Even could we could we move the entire building? Move it, moving it closer to the road, 20 feet. But you know. Yeah, you know, but you don't, you know, I have no land. I know. know. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, the, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start, right? You're going to jack it up and move it. Move once, it. Once yeah. you start messing with it, building is the land. Level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I can, we, I can present the conundrum of, of sorts to the the FRCF people. Yeah. And just brainstorm with them to see what they think about funding or feasibility or or the immediacy of it is what we got to do. Some we got to go up there and take some good pictures. Well, well they might come out. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's yeah. let's let's start with Ron talking to him, then we can we can right. take it from there. Yeah, yeah, right. It's kind of easy to talk about. Just By the like, way, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're you know from a 
a step back a little bit. I don't think there's a need, immediate pressing need to do anything. The maple tree is there. The foundation isn't separated. There's 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 appears to be material in the distance, like um, Dale was saying. Um, water isn't on the foundation. You know, all those things. If any of those conditions change, then the, the speed of you reacting would, you know, would increase. But for right now, I think we have enough time to explore it. We just wanted to see if you wanted to even do that. You know, like some you, you could say just ignore it and just let it sit and let's watch for changing conditions. But now you know it, you can't know it. You know, yeah. you know it. And now it's in, it's in it's on our survey now. Yeah, right? that's, that's right. That's right. Right. All right. So Not let's just start checking. Three, but we'll take it from there. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Okay. All right. We got some more information. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of the race. I've never been out back. So it's not going on. Not being there. That picture does look like it's hanging. I'm going to tell you the smartest move is to go up on the stage and look out the back windows. Okay. <laughs> Your feet and your ankles will like you better. <laughs> I, I have walked out there. I've walked around the building out back. It's not impossible to do, but it is not a walk in the park. It is not a sidewalk and it's not like lawn. So uh, take a look at what you're walking to first. Right. So, so you're saying it's pretty soft out there, Dale? <laughs> it's not so much that it's soft, it's quite steep. steep. You know, as you look at the map that Ron just showed, where it says the top of the bank, that is tight to the building. So, you know, like you step forward and you're not up against the building anymore. You're two feet down or four feet down or whatever have you. Right. Stop up against the maple tree. But uh, again, you know, I, we weren't too sure how this ended up on the agenda, which is the reason that I hung on all this long. We thank you for whatever looky-see you are going to do into it. Um, knowing that the building is probably not gonna fall down this month, this year, or in the next 10 years. But most certainly if uh, you know folks in the know take a peek at it and say, whoa, 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 you gotta do something there, then we have to find out if we even can do something. Right. Okay, well, we'll, we'll Ron will have more information for us in a couple of weeks. Okay, Start thank you so much, see guys. Okay. Opioids. Everybody familiar with opioids? <laughs> Been around for a few years. Okay, they had a yeah. big settlement in pharma, which uh, the town has received money for as part of the settlement. Uh, you have to say you want the money. The town said yes, we do. And second question with a second round of settlements that retailers had to come through the CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, a um, couple of manufacturing uh, resellers of the drug. And the town can get direct pay, or we can give up the money, and then it gets redistributed to the general fund. There's like a general fund of money that wasn't accepted. The more state of Vermont, the LCT, are trying to get towns to say yes to the, accept the money so that you can redistribute it locally within Jenna's house, Sheriff's apartment, anybody dealing directly with opioid uh, interdiction or mediation or services. How much, how much does it look like? You know? No, they won't. They won't say. But it's not a lot. No. Yeah. No, they say it might be four or five hundred bucks. Oh. Max. Yeah. yeah. I think last year, I think we got a little over a thousand dollars. So it's more like a donation to a service agency kind of money. But it's fine. But collective, collectively across the state of Vermont, it's spread out in yeah. county agencies and other things. Yeah. So it's not in the state of Vermont. So. So yeah, it's more like conditions that it is anything. We wouldn't use it here. Yeah. We would have to uh, send it to some place that has a service break. So the motion uh, because it's due May 2nd. Um, this is your notes on it. The executive it summary, just to take with you so you can start to see what I just said. Um, it's uh, May 2nd is the deadline. The, that we have to decide. Yeah, we have to sign on and say, I am authorized to accept this money on behalf of the Okay, but we don't have to decide what we're going to do with it today. No, they'll, right. they'll eventually they'll start making payments. The system we have upstairs is Jen. 
will monitor the payments made. And in June, she will collect the amount that we received and then come to you with a recommendation. Okay. Spend it somewhere. Okay. I'll make the money and we make the money. What's he going to do? Buy opiates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're definitely having. Okay, got a second? Yeah. Okay, all in favor of authorizing Ron to accept the opiate money settlement, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let me before you go on, Ron. I sent you all. I've been, I've been talking with with Kim, and um, and I sent you all. Or actually, Ron sends you copies of a couple of email exchanges between us because I was trying to. And particularly one day when he came in and and every there was no one in the office. Everybody was sick. That horrible buggy thing that was going around, and that really made me think about you know Kim and coming back and. And situations and was trying to figure out, well, even when she comes back, if she's still fairly vulnerable, you know, what can we, are there, is there some work that she can, you know, that she can do at home? So I just, and, and she sort of really, you know, we're in an odd situation. Here we have a town clerk who's been out for, you know, eight, eight months because the kidney transplant and everything has not gone as, as one would hope. Um, she, she so, you know, every time we talk to her, she so wants to get back to work. Um, she's frustrated at not being able to come back to work. Um, I think this week she was having blood work done again to see if changes they've made in, the, in her medications are helping her immune system start to build back up again. Um, in talking to her, she was, there really, there isn't much that she can do at home. Uh, and, and looking at the, the sort of description of a town clerk's job, it really is um, a lot of the, st the stuff you need to enter and do really is stuff that's here in the office. It's while a lot of people outside can do searches into the office, it doesn't work all the work that they have to do here in the office. Um, she, got, she got most of, we're, we're talking about the... Um, the delinquent tax stuff because she was gone in September. She got most of that stuff set up. And, and as we know, she's for years, she has an excellent system set up. And so most of that work has gotten, was set up before her surgery. So, um, so Krista is just, if you will, sort of been filling in the blanks and, and doing it. There are a couple of properties that, um, that she's going, that Krista's going to work on. Um, since since we we don't know, um, and and again we're in a situation, so we've got a we've got a town clerk who has been out. We don't know how much longer she's going to need to be out, even though she doesn't want to be out. Then when she comes back, under what kind of of uh, parameters? Yeah, what kind of parameters? Uh, again, one of the things she had proposed to her doctor when she when you get to the end of May and needing to those books and a lot of work that Krista hasn't done yet, that um, it could be a situation where um, where Kim could come in alone nights or Saturdays or, or something to, to work. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I think we're at a time it's been going on long enough. And if, if, and people having questions, you know, usually it's somebody, when somebody's out a long time, people think somebody's malingering and they don't want to come back to work. We're on the other side where you've got somebody who really, really wants to come back to work and it is, it, it's not safe for her to come back. But I'm, uh, I, I think it's time and I'm sure she'll do it, but to ask him to have her doctor send us a notification as to his best guess, guess now, as to when she might be able to come back to work and what kind of work she can do, what kind of um, of things that we need to see, what we can do or what we can't do to make the office as safe as possible for her. We've got Ron's, we've gotten set up, so we're gonna have the office deep cleaned. 
shortly. I don't know if we have the date yet, but that's being set up. So that's a <clears throat> that's a good thing. You know, she's she, again, she's hoping to be back the end of May, but I think I I think for everybody's sake right now, it makes sense to get not not filtered through Kim and and her optimism and desire to come back to work. But what her doctor says to us as a as a town as to sort of what he sees and and projects and realizes it's all you know it's all in flux because it depends on how she responds to the medicine and, and you know and how it you know how her immune system builds up. But um, and, and again at, at the different levels, what does what does that mean for the office? What does that mean for what she can do? The whole thing. So I think it's time. I, I just wanted to, all of us to talk about it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send her a note tomorrow, just asking her to ask the doctor to give us a, his best guesstimate as to and what we can do so that we have it officially on the record. Because I think when you're dealing with someone with a, with a serious medical issue, we we want to do everything we can to facilitate him getting back here as much as she can, as soon as she can. But with there, there are also pragmatically legal things that we need to make sure that we are taking care of. So, so if something happens, it's not, you know, I said, certainly people shrug, say we aren't responsible, but that it's, you know, you got, I mean, I know people are, are worried. Chris is worried. Other people in the office, you know, if she comes back, if somebody comes in and so many times with colds and stuff, this, again, what really made me think of it is the stomach bump that was going around that everybody was getting that was, wiping them out. People didn't know they were sick until suddenly they were violently ill, you know, and if somebody came in and then Kim got sick, people would feel terrible because you, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to put anybody at, at risk, but we're in a, it, it's a, it's a difficult, awkward situation for everyone, but we'll just, we'll just work with Kim and her doctors and we'll come up with a plan and we'll do the best we can. Just sort of keep everybody, uh, you know, aware of the situation. So I just thought everybody else that, that that's where we are. And hopefully they're finding some a different combination of drugs that's that's helping her immune system. I can't, oh man, if I've been shut up in my house for nine months. Oh, wow. That's hard. <coughs> nine months. <Yeah. laughs> I know. It's been, a, it's been a long, it's been a long haul for her. And I'm sure it's got to be hard on our family and everybody else. I mean, you know, this is this is this is not easy. But we'll hope for the best. She's got good doctors. She is certainly very determined. You know, and she's determined to get better and get back there. So we'll we'll come up with a plan and see what we can do and work with her. Okay. Yeah. Traffic ordinances. There's a change of pace. Oh, it's just a really quick question as we come up with a plan of attack on the ordinance. If the board members individually have any uh, highlight concerns, you know, I, you know, like North High Park, for example, has um, the village speed limit on Ferry Street is 35. So that'd be 30, you know, those kind of things. Or uh, the 35 from Route 100 is deemed. Uh, the center bill should that be 35 all the way or term instead of 25. So if you had if you had specific areas that you always thought was not right, then those road segments we could pull off into their own individual segment. We didn't want to go too far on gravel roads because of the legislator changing you know, the 35. I'm guessing that most of our 35s will be fine at 35, gravels at 35 that are now 50s. I don't know if you want to look at those and get into 30 or 25. That doesn't it, it, that doesn't seem well, we typically dead end roads slow. We don't really include those in the ordinance, but through roads, if all the gravel turns to 35 and it's leaving you in paved roads, what, what's left on uh, what we should look at? And so I want to make sure as we get into that kind of study that the board members have their project, if you will, on the list so we don't miss it. I would. Center feels like obviously, uh, yeah. I, I've never heard it more. Other than the speed on Centerville itself, you know, the straightaways right. to center. Right. 
uh, Trimley Hill and Center Hill Road are the two that we hear most noise about. Yeah, I Trimley Hill apparently don't have any ordinance. I live on that road. I didn't realize I didn't pay attention to signs until he brought it up. Um, but it's poorly marked on Trimley Hill coming up and Garfield Road. There's one sign on the bottom of Garfield Road, almost at the fishing game. So it's on Morsel's side. It's not even. Oh, huh. That's not your feel, but it's nothing at the beginning of the road, nothing. <laughs> so that's all. Just keep thinking like that because when we start to, we want to have one hearing eventually, it all changes our one. Yeah, they go all at once. Yeah. And we're a lot of people like Garfield. Yeah. I mean, I think Garfield paves in the, in the summertime, Garfield receives a lot of traffic. Yes. Garfield paves. They want to go up to the reservoir. Yeah, going up the, the reservoir. reservoir. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where the bridge is going. I, mean, I think I think if you look at the town accident, we should report. I bet you the Garfield Corner up there is probably it's the we should approach a state and see if they'll buy some signs for us up in there. And it's from the ball fields on. So every you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, there's I don't know how, what night it is, but there it's just boom, boom, boom whenever it gets dark. And then they go like Garfield Crossroad or and I agree with you 100%, but I can tell you what's going to happen. I live right up on the road, so I don't care. But <laughs> people that are right on the road, I can imagine. But we need the ball field. I'm not saying I mean, we got one that's coming up, and it's going to be the center road. I can see that. We're speeding up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Judkins 11 11. That's just passively encouraging them to do the right thing in the sense of the 11 11 permit that you waive the fees for. So they've had the paperwork. I did send it certified to them. They haven't approached any for clarifications. I'm assuming that there's no legal issues. It's more philosophical, potentially. Um, as far as I know, they still are using the public road for their staff lines. So um, I don't think they have any intentions of moving them. Or unburying them on Zach Woods Road, but they should get permission like everybody else, which is where we kind of left it. So it was, it's an escalation, if you want to call it that, to send it by mail. That's all. It's not, a, it's not enforcement at this point. Right. It's just making sure that we're clear that they have what the town requires them, that they can decide to follow through or not. Uh, at one point, Chastity offered to go meet with them, maybe. You try that before a certified mail. Is she willing to do that? Yeah, see when she gets back. Yeah. yeah. Or just send the mail. I don't know. We don't usually have this long, drawn out process for 11 11. It's usually it's pretty quick. So let's, let's get Chastity back and see if she'll. Yeah. yeah, there's no there's no emergency no. No, no policy issue. Yeah, okay. Boss subdivision. Yeah, that's what yeah. it's it's a, it's a little there. We just keep going. We do have a um oh. an attorney visit coming to you all on the uh, May 9th meeting to talk about uh Christ care. What Crisis Care Center on Central Road. So when a DRB approval gets appealed to Superior Court Environmental Division, it changes from DRB managing a case or the public, if you will, to the court managing the case and the select board represents the town. Town attorney feels that by May 9th, the select board's gonna have to start taking some action, decision-making type stuff on what level of participation you wanna Put forth how much tax dollars do you want to spend on that case? So the select board always has to make a decision, and almost 90% of the time we monitor it as an yeah. interesting part. We monitor, we, we get all the filings to watch what the neighbors are usually doing back and forth between the project person and the neighbors and let them kind of sort out neighborhood issues through the court system, but we're not ignoring them, we're just monitoring it. In this case, I think the town attorney has. A little bit more information that you might want to bring to the board as far as the executive session and the court case type stuff. And I don't think it, I, don't, I can't remember the last time the town attorney was in. So he wants to make, he wants to visit. 
Which is <laughs> no. a, not a bad thing to do in the town attorney. Yeah. You could ask them other questions too, about legal issues and whatnot. So it's kind of a twofold meeting. Right. Okay. Um, tomorrow night, he's doing the same exact thing with the DRB on a couple of uh, tricky legal issues that they're facing at their level. Again, it's attorney uh, client type of stuff that the public uh, will be partly uh, excused from, but some of it will be dealt with process issues and things like that, not related to a particular case. But don't typically have a town attorney help it. Just, it's, oh, very, it's unusual, oh, but right. at some point, you need to leave and see them and say hi and all that other stuff, just to we do pay enough money during the course of the year. So that's for your May 9th. May 9th, that's right. Okay. Thanks. Anybody got anything else? The only thing I've got is what I talked to you about, Susan. Uh, yes. I mean, I'm going to run it by the other board members. Yeah. I'd like to do something different this year with our sand, our highway sand. I talked to Ron. I'd like to hire a couple of tandem trucks. I'd like to get that sand hauled down here in a week, week and a half, or what it's whatever it's going to take. We'll run that excavator. We bought that excavator. We need to do some ditching. So we'll. I have Mark. I talked to Mark about it. I'll have him put up the sand up there. Brian can work up there. Whoever runs the loader, put a pile of sand up. Even if it's two days is worth of sand, we'll get a couple trucks. We'll hire a couple trucks. Do we really need to put up what we put up last year? Well, I haven't approached that. There's still quite a pile of sand up there. <laughs> a huge pile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I but, think if you get but, a bad winter, but at the same time, I still, if spring hit early, we could get into our bed. I still, I still think that we should put up the sand that we usually put up in case there is an emergency and something happens. You know, he'll have the extra sand. I, I, I'm, I agree. There's a cost to that, and that's so. Yes. That's on a year like that we're in right now, we're talking about saving costs. I mean, and again, I'm I'm not that, necessarily opposed to bringing tracks with them, but at the same time, that's one the cost. One thing I haven't talked to Mark about, I can talk to him about it, see where he is, and see how he feels about that. But I'm sure that he's going to say that he wants to keep bringing the sand down for this year, even even if we just put a pile up there in Carfree, that would be a savings right there instead of trucking it down here yeah that's that and then if we needed it because i've done that over the years many times that's my vote that's your vote is to put a pile of sand up there and i don't know enough about the processes but my process i mean i'm looking out there and there's 40 500 yards out there i mean yeah, how much? It's up to the rest of the board members. To, well, but how, how much have we used? And and we've never gotten to the back of that pile since I've lived in this town. Mark was close. So what was would close. happen if we did get to the back of it? Who knows what you'd find? Mark was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Mark was supposed to keep track of it this okay. year, this winter. Yeah. The boys were supposed to write it down, and we're supposed to have a number, but I haven't got that number. Right. Right. I can bring it back to the next meeting. But yeah, well, that would be good. And and again, what's the size of the pile that's there? You know, you're you're right. Or is that's already, I don't disagree. With that's that. already blended, right? But I was down here. Uh -huh. Is that blended, or they blend it as they? No, <laughs> they do it a little different. It's just fine. It don't matter how it gets done. It all works out the same way. They take and cap it off with salt and then put sand on top of that. It all gets mixed in one way or another. Except this last 4,500 yards isn't getting used. It's getting rained on year after year after year. That back stuff just, in my opinion, I think we got it. At least one year here, get to the back of the fucking bio once. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. What do you think? He's looking at you. I don't, I, I, again, I mean, it's one of those things. I just, I don't know enough. You're right. That always seems to. I know you want to have some ahead, but but how much ahead do you need to be? Is the 
and and you're right. If you did, if if your if your emergency if if you got all the way through and it was only the end of February, you know, if you had something up at the up at the pit, I mean, if you had to get into it, you know, I don't know. You gotta. And what you're saying is put something in Garfield, and so if you you just get fit, get it from there, right? Yeah, that's if, that's what I used to be expensive to be the loader driver. When I was over at Washington, we had a, a shed, mm -hmm. and the last three four years that I was over there, the shed <laughs> didn't grow any, so I was using more and more sand because as you get new guys, they use more sand, you know. So I just put it down to the pit, and then in March we needed something, I truck it back. Which is fine, you know. They could leave it up there, and if they need it, they wouldn't run out and move nowhere until March, probably. But we do need to run this excavator to do some ditching. Yes, yeah, two thousand twenty-five. Yeah. We are under the gun, right, Ron? About these ditching and anything eight percent and more is going to be. Uh, yeah, the high prior, the high erosion sites have to be done. Right. Which is your red lines on that. That's right. one of the reasons why we bought this excavator is to do some ditching. Well, the fifth person. What? Well, the fifth person, too. <laughs> right. Well, so it's but, 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 well, it, 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 it was a twofer, but definitely the excavator, and, and that was the point of getting it out there. So, I mean, I, I think it does make. You know, it's sort of they've just always been they they've used bringing the 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 sand down as kind of a filler. You know, when it's rainy or there's something and you do it, so you just get used to doing something some way. And I think Roly's right to say let's take for a couple of years, let's get it all done at the beginning. You know, I think there are plenty of filler things you can probably come up with them to do if you get a rainy stretch or whatever. But really, the goal is to get the excavator out there, earning its keep, if you will. Here's a man that's done it all his life. Even when it's raining, you can ditch. Yeah, yeah. Am I wrong? No, you, 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 as long as it's not, you know, poor and like we yeah. are. I mean, an inch an hour. Correct. But a lot of times in the rain, it might help you to know whether the water's running down the lake. Wait, but, that's new Believe me, I've done a lot of ditch, but it, it, it will. It's a little harder on your dirt road and your dump trucks and stuff. Yeah, it is. But you know, when when they get done that section, they got a grader. They can grade it, cuff it over. Mm -hmm. It's not a not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I just felt in a year where we're talking about fuel prices and everything else, and you're right. I I just think that. Some consideration, and maybe we, maybe we just have a little bit more reserve this year. Like, okay, look, last year we brought it out fifty feet beyond the shed. Let me talk to Mark. <laughs> I'll bring it back to next meeting, or I'll and ask I, him to come in. I love what Mark. I, 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 I respect Mark. I'm not. I'm not here to tell him that he's doing anything wrong. I just, if we're going to talk about bringing it down, let's not let people who haven't ever brought it down bring it down, and all of a sudden it's leaking out here all the way down to Route 15 or whatever that's it, you know. So. Let's see how many yards he used. Does he want to go to Garfield? Some places go from I know. Johnson. I know. Tester. I know. It's great. And we're in a good position. We are in which way you guys decide to do it. We are in a great position. No matter which way. Right. But it's sort of it's two things. It's the it's the quantity, but it's also getting it all done at the beginning. That's what I'm at. Yeah, yeah. That's the it well, well, this, it's two things. things. Do we think that's gonna be no. more cost to it? Well, that's what I was gonna I was gonna say that you know if we do it a different way, but account for you know, so you can answer that question about what does this cost just dollar-wise, if you offset it by the additional work is your idea. No matter what it costs, you said it's gonna provide more ditching time on the backside. Right. Okay. So how would that math works if Mark gets 25% more ditching done because they did it in two weeks, then that's that's your goal is to get more mileage done at the day. I don't believe you. If you if you put three of our trucks on and you put two of their trucks on and hire two trucks Trailers, out yeah. there, tandem to tri triaxles. Yeah. Okay, I'm following you now. I thought you were saying don't no, use no. our trucks no, at no, all. No, no, no. That's why I was I was I was saying you're crazy. I think I, I we have the truck sitting right here and the guy's working. I said give her. Okay. Our three trucks. Okay, there we go. Our three trucks. Yeah. And two and hire two. 
okay, and get five trucks hauling. I think if the pile's up there and the man, all he's got to do is load them. I, I How do think they push we the pile can up? get it down here in the meat stock. How do they push the pile up? What's that? How do they push They the use the back. Okay. They use the back. Yeah, well, and, and, and as much too, just tell them all they've got so we can. That's know, one way they, well, you know. Do, as, as, depending as on you the mentioned, quantity, right. do what we can do in a week yep. with material down here and then stockpile a big pile of there. there. Yeah, just say what gets down here in a week's time is going to be enough. You know, again, with what we've already got. Especially if you've got five trucks on. Yeah. And then... I don't want to be cheap, but I mean, anything to save overall cost, we're talking about buying a new. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. With you. I'm just trying yeah. to not to get anybody excited. I'm just trying to get it done, get on to what we need to get on to because definitely the ditching, right? You know, Mark can get his. I mean, you got 30 days, there's still 30 days when you're big saving. Mm -hmm. Is it still 30 days to do the same? No, it's uh, three days, 72 hours. No, no, but I mean, oh, how yeah, long? Oh, yeah, your tickets are 30 days. Okay, your tickets are 30 days, so we can get in between that. We can stitch on one side down, then head on the other side down, and spread that thing around. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay. Anything else? We're good? Yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn. Sure. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. Anybody opposed? <laughs> You're crazy. Okay. <laughs>